Well, hello everyone. Happy Friday. Welcome to another lawn care live stream. My name is Ron Henry and I'm here to answer your lawn care questions. Sometimes I have the answer, sometimes I don't, but either way, we have a great time talking about lawn care. If this is the first time you've ever joined the show, first of all, welcome. The way this works is really simple. You simply drop your questions or comments down in the chat and I work through them in the order they come in. And uh, again, sometimes I don't have the answers. Uh, you know, some of the members that we have, we have some golf pros or other, or other lawn care pros or sometimes in the live stream that uh, can chime in as well. So at any rate, we have a great, a great time. So that's what we have here tonight. Let's see who is in the live stream. We got VMH chime in saying, hey, Ron, happy snow day. It is a snowy, well, not a snowy Friday here. It was a snowy Friday last Sunday. It was really snowy last, last uh, Sunday, but uh, but today's actually pretty nice. I was supposed to get so have some snow in the forecast, but I think that that is not going to happen, thankfully. Thankfully, because uh, tell you what, we got a little taste of snow, probably two to three inches around here. And uh, that was enough. That was enough for the year. It was enough for the year. It definitely set the lawn back. If you guys uh, want to see, I can show you guys here what the what the lawn looked like as far as whenever the snow uh, dropped in. Um, let me see if I got a, a video here. I can show you. Yep. So this is what the lawn looked like the day uh, of snowing. So after when it really came down in the afternoon, you can see that's a good two to three inches, man. That's quite a bit of snow, especially for Georgia. You know, there's tire lawns covered. It uh, it was pretty. It was pretty. But the the net effect of that is that it absolutely nuked the green that was was coming in. You know what I mean? So it was, um, you know, my parents got to the airport okay, so that was good. But uh, yeah, we, we got our, our one or two days of snow. It's nice to see it. Took some nice pictures. Alex got some really cool drone shots. And the snow can stay away now for all I'm concerned. So we, we had our we had our snow for 2022. Hopefully, uh, hopefully that's it. You can see what happened. So you guys remember how the lawn looked uh few weeks ago, right? When it was greening up. So after the snow, this is actually today. I took this about uh, three hours or so before the live stream. So you can see pretty much all the color other than on the right side of the lawn absolutely got sucked out of it. You still got some, some green over there, but for the most part, all the green is gone. So thank you, Mother Nature. Uh, we have to wait a little bit longer for spring, but confidence is high. Confidence is high, right? Things will, uh, things will, will, uh, will recover. Can't, can't complain. It's only January, right? I mean, we don't want to be out mowing like or having to mow in January. So I guess there's some benefits to that. All right. So Alex B is in the house. He says, happy Friday, Ron. Just got another snowstorm up here in New Jersey. Sorry to hear that. Sorry to hear that. After a few uh, days of reprieve, back down to 20 degrees during the, during the day and 10 at night. It's supposed to be like this another week or so. Uh, similar attempts we had last week pretty much zapped the remaining green color out of lawn. I totally see that, man. It, it didn't you know, here's the thing, the cold weather here for a while, the, the, the lawn was hanging on to that, but getting, being covered in that snow for, you know, two days, uh, that, that definitely did a number on the grass. The Bermuda did not like that, but we don't have 10 degree weather like you have uh, up in Jersey. So it could always be worse, right? It could always be worse. <laughs> All right, next up, we got Mr. Kilting in the lawn in the house. He's saying, how's it going? It's going well, it's going well. I don't have a kilt as yet. Don't have a kilt as yet, I'm sure. Um, you know, we'll just figure something out, but... Uh, no kilt as yet. That's still your thing, sir. So we'll we'll let you with that. Hopefully, all is going well with you. And Mark's like, "What's all the white stuff? It's snow, man. It's it's uh, you know what's crazy is I had to drive the day um, that Sunday morning to get my parents to the airport. And once you get on the highways, it's really not that bad. But man, like leaving the neighborhood, like literally the the mile leaving the house was the most dangerous part of the trip, both going and coming. So. Uh, just, just, uh, just a fun fact. We don't, we don't have the equipment around in Georgia to, um, you know, take care of the side roads. The highways tend to be okay, but the side roads tend to not get the, you know, the love that, uh, that that's really needed to keep them completely safe. What's up, Dalvin? Dalvin, Larry's in the house, saying hopefully all is staying warm. Yeah, man, it's been, uh, it's been a cool, it's been a very cool week. It's supposed to get even colder next week, from what I understand. We're supposed to have some days in the twenties, which is not good, not good, not good at all. And uh, Tom's like more so than uh, than Chicago. Uh, maybe, maybe I don't know. I haven't been to Chicago lately, but uh, we got our two, two to three inches in some spots, and that was that was plenty. Robert Rainey's in the house. So Robert, guys, so Robert saying good evening, good evening, Robert. Thanks for coming to hang out, sir. And Robert uh, got a real mower. So as far as like the person that has honors of you know getting some new toys, getting ready for this season. Look at what Robert picked up today, man. Check this out. Look at this. This is now, guys. I don't, I don't want you guys to see this and start spending a bunch of money, but just, I mean, this is a really nice piece of kit, kit that he got here. 
So if I'm not mistaken, I think he told me it's a John Deere 220E. It's like one of those hybrid units where if I'm not mistaken, the, the propulsion is done by the gas, uh, by the gas engine primarily. And then the gas engine also provides power to the, uh, to the motor, which powers the reel. So really, really nice unit. Uh, he said it was uh, clean. I think he got it uh, all set up today as well. Like they sharpened it up, freshened it up and everything. And uh, that's a really, really good looking, really good looking mower, man. So congrats on that. Congrats on the new hardware. I know, I think you upgraded from a McLean, right? You had a McLean before and you went to that. So it's, it's pretty, it's a pretty substantial upgrade. It's a pretty substantial upgrade. Uh, I think your lawn, once you get to put it on the lawn, your lawn will thank you for it. So it looks, looks really, really good. Then you gotta send us pictures, man. Once you start mowing with it, you know what you should do? I'm not sure, did you, when you said you upgraded from the McLean, did you get rid of the McLean or do you still, um, do you still, do you still have two mowers? Cause it'd be interesting to see if you have the same experience that I did, where if you're able to make a pass with the McLean and see how the lawn looks and then make another, and then make a pass with the new, we'll just call it the new hotness. So with the McLean and then the new hotness and see if you see, so notice a big difference. You are gonna notice a huge difference, but it'd be cool to see a side to side. Plus it'd be a cool picture to, to send in and show everyone the difference between, you know, like a, uh, it's a good real mower, but a, but a, a lower end um, powered real mower and then a greens mower. It'd be, be nice to, to show the fans that. So I don't know, you may not have the mower anymore, but if you do, it'd be a cool picture. Congrats again, sir. I'm sure you're absolutely going to uh, to love it. All right, Kevin D. Jones is in the house. He said, hey, Ron and the lawn care crew, what's going on, Kevin? Hopefully you are doing well, sir. Thanks for coming to hang out in the show uh, as as always. As always, and he's saying, Tom, I'm about an hour south and got zero snow. Yeah, it's funny, man. So it's funny, um, Kevin, so here's the thing. I, um, you know, I'm in the Gainesville area. Once you get, if you know where like Pleasant Hill Road is, like, so going towards uh, Gwinnett, literally as I was coming back from the airport and the snow was really starting to even come down, you could, you could literally like within a space of like two miles, went from like no snow to like a bunch of snow, like snow literally coming down where everyone was like slowing down to a crawl. So I'm not surprised that south of, um, you know, an hour south of here, so like by the, by the airport, maybe a little bit south of the airport, didn't get very much snow. And if it did, it didn't stick. Whereas what came down absolutely stuck. It took, it didn't melt until, let me see, it came down, um, came down Sunday, didn't melt until Tuesday. So there you go. So we got to enjoy it for a while. Got some, like, I, like I said, got some really cool pictures. Uh, Alex got some good, really good, some really cool videos. So uh, always fun stuff, fun stuff. All right, next up we got Michael Norton in the house. He says, my essential G showed up today. You can smell it through the bag. Very cool. I'm glad to hear that everything made it in uh, great, uh, Michael, that's awesome. And you're right, Essential G does have a, um, what does Alan call it? The smell of success, it does have that. But uh, yeah, I'm glad that your stuff made it in as, as well. And you know, that's a great segue into one of the talking points I have tonight. I gotta see what questions we got, but as, a, as you guys get the questions rolling in, I can talk about um, the Golf Horse Lawn Academy. So as you guys know, the, the course was launched last year in March um, and like the start of last season. And my big goal over the course of last year, some of the content that I filmed was to finish building up the course. So that's done, like there's, there's, there's content in every single module. I'm gonna add more in this season once we, uh, once we start mowing. I've got some cool ideas that's gonna go into that. But in, in addition to that, um, something I've done is for any members of the Golf Course Lawn Academy, if you are buying Miramichi Green products in the Golf Course Lawn Store, which is what I, I use primarily on my lawn as far as improving soil quality, there's now a discount that's extended to you guys and gals that you know anytime you buy um, you know Miramichi Green products in the store, I'm hoping to be able to expand it to other um, lines as well. But right now it's just Miramichi Green. You guys get a discount. It's not a one-time discount. It's not like a um, you know if you buy one thing or you buy 50 things, you get the discount. So it's pretty good. It's it's uh, it's a right right now. It's 10% off of everything that you um, that you order in the store that are 10% off of any Miramichi green products in the store. So something that I've also done as a, as a way to sweeten the deal is make it, um, you know, make it easier for people that wanna get into the academy um, and make it easier for them to do that is if you buy anything on the golf course salon store right now, uh, you're gonna see an upsell that's going to, if you buy the academy at the store, so don't go to like golfcoursalon.com, go to, if you, if you wanna get it, go to the store to get the discount it'll take $45 off the price of the course. So given the fact that 
you know, you get the training, which is which is very awesome. You get the uh, the calendar, also great. You get access to the private Facebook group, which is really one of the best things. Like I was asking the group for feedback, like what do they like about the course? And they said, listen, the group is like literally one of the best things. The material is awesome, but the, but the group of, of, of like-minded people is really, really cool. So you get access to that. And then now the, you have a way for it to literally pay for itself for you to save money, where when you buy the stuff you're gonna buy anyway, right? Uh, you get a discount, so. Very cool. So let me show you guys really quickly what that looks like. If we go over to uh, golfcourselawn.store, and let's say you're like you're gonna buy Prodiamine because everyone's gonna get some pre-emergent on their lawn this year, right? Soon. So if we get like say a tub of Prodiamine, you're gonna see now there is. And I add it to my cart. You're gonna see now there's an upsell button. So add the Golf Course Lawn Academy for forty for forty five dollars off. Um, so you add that to cart, and when you go to checkout, it knocks. $45 off the price of off the course. So again, you, you get you get a bit of a discount, a bit of a break that allows you to save money going forward on anything that you buy um, that, that that's that's done by Miramichi Green that we sell from Miramichi Green. So that includes the carbon kit, uh, Essential G, the pest control, anything with Miramichi Green made by Miramichi Green, you're gonna be able to save money on. So something that you guys can take advantage of if you if you are so inclined. It's a way to again literally have the course pay for itself. So I'm always looking for ways to add more value. And that was the best thing I could think of. You know, what, what's better than, than putting money back in your pocket, right? To where eventually as you buy stuff over time, it basically becomes free. So very, very cool, man. So I'm glad your, your Essential G showed up, um, Michael. And you also gave me a segue to be able to talk about the course, which is cool. And we will go on to the other questions and comments. We got uh, Lance F in the house saying, happy Friday, everyone. What's going on, Lance? Hopefully you are doing well. Kevin G giving me, uh, uh, Kevin giving me a hard time about... Um, Free carbon and water blessed Ron's lawn and leveled it. I mean, it was level before, man. Come on now, come on now. I didn't need the snow to level the lawn, but you know, the, a little extra water didn't hurt, didn't hurt, you know, and it shut the grass down to where I'm not gonna have to mow until maybe February, maybe February. I'm already that crazy guy that was out mowing, that was out mowing in, uh, in Jan. So, uh, you know, if I have to wait a couple of weeks to put the mower back out on the lawn again, there you go. On the subject of mowers, guy, one thing um, I need to tell you guys is uh, if you guys have Toro Greens Masters, so I know you, I've been sending you guys to Jerry Pate and, and I've told you to ask for Joey. Joey is no longer with them, but there is another gentleman there, Bruce, who will take care of you guys. So, so you can still take your, your Greens Master to Jerry Pate, no issue with that, but um, Joey's not the guy to ask for now. It's going to be Bruce. So just want to let you guys know that in case you call and you're like, hey, you can talk to Joey. And they're like, he's not here anymore. You're like, oh, what's going on? Ron told me to call here. So you guys have now the updated information as far as who to contact when you are uh, getting your mower serviced. Uh, yeah, Michael, that's fine. I know you, I know you guys feel in New York, but you guys can keep your snow. I am, uh, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good without it. I'm good without it. We got Pacific Northwest Lawns in the house. Saying good evening, everyone Hope, says, hopefully everyone's doing okay. So guys, one question you guys also had last week, um, kind of the, the, the message or the note that um, Kevin just sent to message about, about leveling. You guys know last week we were talking to Supersod. They were on the, uh, on the live stream and uh, they were talking about their, I was talking about their, their product, the, the discount you guys were able to get up until February 28th. And one of the questions that we had to answer was what goes into SuperSod, like what's in the soil three, the soil cubed component. So I, I've got the link up here so I can show you guys on the website yourself. You can go look it up. I'll put the link in the chat afterwards. But there's three things that make up the um, the organic component of of the level mix. So it's, it's uh, grass clippings. So it's three things, grass clippings, Wheat straw from the I guess they have a sod farm or they have a, they have a, they have a farm but they also have a sod farm so I believe it's zoysia too so grass clippings from their sod farm wheat straw from their farm and then finally cow manure from a local dairy and they add some mycorrhiza as well to to give it a kicker to kind of improve the microbial activity so that is why the product works so well like literally if you guys uh, were following the content if you guys are watching my top dressing uh, videos from last year and the results that I got. It was really, it was, it's really, really good stuff. And just the, the way the lawn recovered, I was mowing, let me think, I was mowing five days after top dressing. So I top dressed over the weekend and by Thursday, I was back out mowing the lawn. So really, really great stuff. Um, and, and that's one of my notes that I had <clears throat> to be able to tell you guys like what the, what the makeup is, what like, uh, what the organic component in uh, the soil cubed is. So now you know, man of my words. 
All right, uh, so Alex B says, you know, the snow's put me off from jumping into the battery revolution. I bought a Toro single stage battery snowblower. My neighbor has a two stage one. Neither are anywhere near my uh, my Arian's gas blower performance. So I don't, so here's, you um, you know, forgive my ignorance here, Alex, but I'm not sure what a single stage and a two stage uh, snow blower is from a battery power, from electrical equipment standpoint. Is it like two speeds or what is what is the uh, the multiple stages for? I guess the only thing that I would um, that I would be concerned about, especially with electrical equipment or electric power tools in um, cold weather, is batteries tend to be less efficient. They tend to work less less good in cold in uh, colder weather. So you never know. I mean, it might be cool to see. Um, you know, I mean, it's, it's an electric snow a snowblower, but it'd be. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily use like the cold weather performance as a measure of how um, you know how electrical equipment can perform. A lot. There's a lot of people around here that have. The um, uh, they have electric electric everything. They have the electric blowers, the ones that stuff you get at Home Depot, and they absolutely love them. They absolutely love them. You know what I mean? Alex has got quite a bit of electrical as well. Um, he's also got the steel combi system, but he's also got an electrical setup as well for uh, for lawn care tools that he he seems to like. So, so yeah, not my thing. You know, I for me the thing for me is that I have um, I, if, if everything could go electric. Right to where like my mower were electric and the string trimmer and blower and everything else could be electric. I think it'd be worth it, but because I still got to get gas for the mower anyway, it's not like that big a deal to go out and still have to get fuel for the combi system as well. You know what I mean? So I think it's one of those things. If you you really see the benefits, if you are like all in, but if you're just if you're halfway, half and half, it's just more work. Now I got something else I got to keep up with, right? Batteries and all this kind of stuff. So. I hear you. Elect I like gas power, there is something to be said for it, at least for now. You know, let eventually electric will pass us, but right now, uh, gas is still is still the way to go, in my opinion. In my opinion. All right, we got David Polanco in the house. What's going on, David? Hopefully you're doing doing well. Long time no see. I haven't seen you live stream for a while. I'm not sure if you were here last week, but if so, I missed you. So welcome back. And we got Travis Vincent in the house saying happy Friday run and golf course lawn squad. Come on springtime. I'm ready to mow you and me both, man, you and me both. Um, my thing to do this weekend, just so I can scratch an itch to get out and do something in the lawn is to get my, uh, my soil test done. I'm about two weeks behind of where I need to be of when I would normally do it, but I want to get my, uh, my soil test in now, which will count as my winter one. And I'll get one in, um, in early spring as well. Just to, I've been doing, I've been spacing them out every three months just so I have the data and no reason to stop now, right? So I got a bunch of soil test kits, might as well use them. But yeah, I'm, I'm ready. I'm actually ready to start mowing, man. I really, I, the the one mow that I had in January a couple of weeks ago, I really enjoyed it so much so that I double cut the lawn and uh, the snow really put a damper on that, you know? The lawn really doesn't really doesn't need it now uh, based on uh, all the cold, the cold weather that we're, uh, we're getting. All right, uh, Lindrick Butler's chiming in. He says, happy Friday, peeps. Ron, I got my test kits. Thanks, it's time for me to get cracking. Keep up with the good work. Yeah, man, that, that's something you guys can all do now, right? I mean, you got your test kits in, um, you know, get your soil test done now because here's the thing, right? You, you're you not gonna be able, or you shouldn't, I should not say you can't, but you shouldn't um, be putting nitrogen or anything like that on the lawn this time of year. But let's say you're in a situation where your your pH is a little bit low, right? And you're, um, you know, where a lime application can help move things in up to a better place. Getting that data earlier in the season, or even really even better, would have been like last year, like late last year in the fall, is is only going to help you. It's only going to help you to get that now um, versus waiting till you know waiting till the springtime. So it's not like your results are going to change that much from a standpoint of nutrient inputs. But pH, that's something that takes a while to adjust. So why not find out where it is now so that you can improve nutrient uptake uh, when it come, when comes springtime. So good job, Lindrick. Glad everything made it in and uh, have fun with that. Uh, I think that's gonna be my thing for tomorrow because again, definitely can't mow. So I'll get out there with my fancy, my fancy dancy uh, probe tool and, uh, and get some soil test samples. Send them out to the, to the nice folks at, uh, at my soil. All right, Mark Houston is in the house. He says, hello from North Carolina. Expecting a little sleep and snow tonight. Sorry to hear that. We are in uh, Northeast Georgia and we are not expecting any snow and sleep tonight. Hopefully we keep it that way. You guys can keep all that evil up north where it belongs. We don't, we don't need any of that down here. We got our snow. We, you know, we, we served our time. We don't want any more uh, snow or, or sleep. That's, uh, yeah, you guys can, you can keep that. Hopefully it's not too much, Mark. It's enough to where it's just gonna look you know, I guess 
make everything look pretty, but not so much that it makes a mess of um, makes it a mess to get out and be around. So uh, we'll see. You have to you have to keep us posted on that. Negative five degrees. We started your car this morning. I don't know, man. It's 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 time to move. You know, uh, one of my uh, my colleagues in Ohio, and they were telling me that it's uh they're getting snow. It was snowing, and there was snow outside. Like they've had snow coverage for uh, I think for several weeks now, at least in the area that they're in. And uh, yeah, I mean, I just I I could not I could not imagine having to deal with um, getting out and shoveling sidewalks and snow blowing. And just it just sounds sounds like a like not fun. Sounds like a whole lot of not fun to me. All right, so let's see what questions you guys have, guys. I mean, it seems like a lot. Everyone's complaining about colder weather. I, you know, my suggestion would be to move to uh, move to Georgia, move down south. Um, but uh, but let's see what else we have here. So G Man shots. I think it's someone new. I don't think I've ever seen you in the live stream before. If so, welcome G Man. Says we just came from the mountains in North Carolina. Got eight to twelve inches of of snow, and the snow drifts were up to eighteen inches. Wow. Yeah, that's um. That's a bit much. I mean, I can't, I cannot imagine what 18 inches of snow would do to the Atlanta area. Like we would, you know, it would it would not be would not be good. It would not be good. All right. So now we have our first question around top dressing. First, like uh, lawn care related question of the evening. We've been goofing off for the last 20 minutes, just talking about snow and cold weather and how much we hate it. Justin Cherapy, Cherapy. I think I'm saying it right. Justin Cherapy. Ooh, looks like you did. You fly model airplanes. I'm um, dude. I I apologize. I'm like a, I'm like a squirrel, right? I always look at people's avatars, and it looks like you got. It looks like an RC plane, I think. I think it's a, I think it's a real plane. If it's an RC plane, it looks cool, man. I used to fly model helicopters back in the day. But yeah, anyway, to your question. You don't care about that. It says, yo, Ron, if I top just my, my Bermuda in May, should I reapply pre-emergent or will it hamper the growth? I've never done that. I've never done that. So I've only applied pre-emergent uh, really twice a year. Uh, last year, I didn't do any because I was doing the whole overseeding thing. But really, I've done pre-emergent in the spring. So... Uh, really or late winter, early spring, so late February, March-ish time frame. And then again in the fall, September-ish, late September is when that happens. I've never done it again after uh, after top dressing, after aeration. Yes, technically, if you are um, aerating your lawn as part of top dressing, like if, you, if you're top dressing your lawn the way that I recommend you do it, which means entails mowing the lawn short, aerating it, uh, and then uh, adding your carbon soil amendments, essential G, whatever happen you be using, and then your fertilizer, and then top dressing. Yes, you are technically breaking or, or punching voids in the vapor barrier that really allows uh, pre-emergent to work its best. I have not experienced uh, like a, a huge change in weeds because of that. So, I mean, is it, are you likely, to, or can you get more weeds from doing an aeration as part of top dressing? Sure, yes. But I've not seen that. I've not. I've not personally experienced that in my line. So I. So no. I. W I really wouldn't. I wouldn't do um, another pre-emergent application afterwards. Here's why, too, Justin. Um, weeds aside, like by May, you know, it, we're already going to be getting heat, plenty of heat. Any weeds that are in your lawn that we're going to germinate, the top, the pre-emergent that you that you put down in late February, early March, should have already arrested that. Should have already stopped that. So I don't know that you're going to get a ton, uh, ton of benefit out of it um, by applying it again in May, anyways. You know, so I, I wouldn't. I've never done that. I've not seen a need to do that. Um, never done it on my lawn. Never done it on, on on Alex's lawn. Never done it on a few of the neighbors in the neighbor in the in my subdivision that's also um, top dresser lawn. None of them have ever done that, and they don't have a huge issue with weeds or anything like that along the lines. And again, because it's so late in the season or so late into spring, getting into summer, that you know, you're really not going to get as much, you're not going to get much out of it. Like the, the pre-emergent should have already been doing its job for a couple of months um, leading up to that, if that makes sense. So no, I absolutely wouldn't. Good question though. Great question. Never been asked that one before, but it's a, it's a good one. And uh, yeah, looking forward to uh, hearing how your top dressing project goes. It's uh it's going to be a ton of fun. Guys, here's, here's the thinking. So I know I've been saying I'm not going to top dress the lawn again this year. I know I've been saying that. However, however, I might not top dress the back lawn. We might do something on the front lawn, uh, just the front lawn this year because, just because, right? One, it'll be big for some cool content. And um, I got some, some. I wanna try out um, some of that soil three, soil cubed, that level mix on the front lawn. So it'll be a smaller top dressing job. It's not gonna be all the crazy equipment. It'll. I wanna do some something that shows like more of, um, 
how to do top dressing that's less intimidating. Because in that video, the one complaint I got was, you know, what's really cool, you're showing us all this really cool equipment and, you know, you got a dingo and, you know, uh, earth, Earthway um, or Earthworks, uh, you know, spreader machine, all this kind of stuff. And we don't have all that. And um, and I get it, right? I mean, if you, once, if you ever top dress a lawn my size manually, you'll understand why you need that kind of equipment. But for a smaller area, like, you know, some of you guys might have, like the front lawn, uh, which is... 1500-ish, 1700-ish square feet, somewhere in there. Um, you know, doing that manually is um, something you can take on. So I wanna, I wanna do some content on that, uh, show you guys the one doing top dressing a slope again, and th but this time we'll be using the soil cubed uh, compost. This should make some, some fun content. Hopefully you guys will get something out of it. Now guys, here's the thing. I'm gonna take some of my lemonade, and if you guys wouldn't mind, we're, I know we're only 25 minutes in, we've had up to, you know, I don't know, 70 something people or so in the live stream. If you guys wouldn't mind touching that like button for me, ever so gently. I mean, it's not going to cost you guys anything. It's a free way to support the channel. And, uh, you know, it sends good vibes to the algorithm, gets more people coming this way. And it gives me a second to uh, have a sip of my lemonade while I wait for you guys to do that. And I can find the next comment. All right. All right. Throat is wet. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you for the likes. I really do appreciate that. Appreciate the support. All right, so uh, Oxen also uh, like you, um, those in North Carolina are also about to get more wintry mix in North Carolina. Please be safe out there. Yep. Sorry, guys. Sorry about that. And Justin says, yeah, he gave some more follow up. Here's the thing, guys. A lot of times, I don't, I, I can't, I don't read the comments that are that are following. So a lot of times, sometimes you guys will leave like additional context that would have been useful to answering the question. So, uh, but yeah, if you apply pre-emergent by March, so like late February, early March, you're good to go. And guys, you know, on the subject of pre-emergent, now's the time to start thinking about that. I mean, not necessarily to be applying it. You don't need to put it down just yet, but start, start thinking about what you're gonna go with. I mean, prodiamine is, um, as far as like value for money, it's really hard to beat prodiamine. Uh, if you um, live in an area or if you've had issues in the past, with crabgrass on your lawn, you want to consider, and you want something that can have a little bit of reach back. Then, uh, Dithiopyr or Dimension is a is another option as well. But that's a, it's a good time to start thinking about it. I personally, I would get start getting your um, you know your pre emergent now. Once you decide on what you want to get, get it now because again, the whole supply chain thing is is real, and you don't want to be one of these people that you know when come late February, early March rolls around and you're trying to get your pre-emergent and it's all sold out everywhere because that that has the likelihood to be a thing this year. So we have it in the golf course lawn store. There's tons of other places that, that carry it as well. Again, for as far as options for um, pre-emergent, you've, um, you've got the small prodiamine. This is the one that Yard Mastery did with, uh, I think it was with Sunnylands they did it with, but we got like four options. You got the small one here, this guy will cover up to 6,000 square feet on a on warm season uh, grass. For cool season, it'll go a lot further than that, but you know, for warm season, around 6,000 square feet lawn, Bermuda grass lawn or Zoysia lawn or St. Augustine lawn. Then you also have the bigger tub, which if you are looking for something, like you have a bigger lawn, right, then this is, um, this is what you wanna go with. And then finally, we have uh, the granular. So for anyone that wants to put down prodiamine, and is, you know, maybe you're intimidated by mixing. You don't want to have to get out, you know, a scale and measure and all this kind of stuff. I mean, you, you technically still, you technically still do need a scale um, to use the granular properly, but it's a lot less granular, right? I play on words. You, to, to, to get to use the granular properly, there's a lot more leeway than the water dispersible granule, which you really need a precise uh, gram scale to be able to to use properly. So you got a couple different options. All those are available at the golf course lawn store. The small one, which looks like this right here, is that size, see, small, small and cute. Again, that guy gets you 6,000 square feet of coverage for a warm season lawn, which is for, for most of you guys, this is all you need because one thing, the one thing that's about this is kind of cool, right? If you don't have a really large lawn, um, you know, you have a big tub of prodiamine laying around that will last you for years and years and years and years and years and years and years. And years. So it's nice to have something that, you know, for the most part, you're gonna use in a season and you're done with. You don't have to, you have to keep it around, right? Now this is a little bit more expensive per application, obviously, than the, than the larger value size, but just something to consider if you have, you know, $21 and you can take care of weeds in your lawn over the spring and summer. So 
And we've got content on the channel showing you how to use it. I've got a video, if you go to like youtube.com and search for Ron Henry Pre-Emergent, I've got a video that shows how to um, how to mix it, how all the kind of tips and tricks, how to apply it, all that fun jazz. So, And also in the video of the store, if you actually go here to make it easy for you guys, let me show you, back, let me show you that. So we come back to like here, I want to say, see, in the, in the description, I got you guys covered. In the description, there's also a link to the YouTube video as well. So while you're there shopping, just scroll down to the bottom. I've got a video that will show you guys everything you need to do to get a great result. So get your pre-emergent uh, now. Doesn't go bad. Have it all set aside so you're good to go. And uh, thanks so much for that. All right, so good good job, uh, Justin. Let's see if we got a super chat in the live stream. We got a super chat in the live stream. Let's get down here and go get that from Mr. LG. What's going on, LG? Hope, you, hope you're doing well, sir. Super chat received. See, that's my jam. Play that funky belly dancing music one more time. Actually, I will do that while I add you as the show sponsor for tonight because you are the first super chat of the evening and therefore you are the show, the show sponsor. Happy to oblige. Let me get you added up here. Make a change here real quick and add LG as the show sponsor. There you go. I appreciate it, sir. Thank you for the support. Every little bit helps. I thank you. Thanks Thanks so much. And again, I'm sure as we go throughout the show tonight, I'll have many chances again to play the belly dancing music. I think it's technically, when I looked it up, it's, it's some kind of tango something is the name of the song. But um, but yeah, there you go. That's what we are rolling with tonight. But yeah, um, Justin, uh, you, should, you should be good to... Uh, to don't put pre-emerge down after top dressing. There's really, really no need to do it. So Tommy Bennett's in the house. He says, I love my uh, JD220. Congrats, man. So it's good. It's good to find out, um, you know, what to, to see. There's other people that also have JDs as well. So I guess in the chat, for those of you that have, um, just like a quick poll. So if you have Toro, you can either type Toro or type T. And if you have a John Deere Greensmore, you can type J or JD, whatever you want to do. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to make it easy for you guys, but just be interesting to find out like among like the home lawn care community, what percentage of people are really into, or like, like you know, what are we more a Toro um, group in general or are we more um, John Deere? So, you know, I, I see more Toro than I do JD, but um, you know, they've got two people already now talking about one. I, and I think, I believe LG has a Toro Greensmaster as well. So that's at least two of us. All right, next up. Daniel's in the house. He has a question. He says, what is your opinion on Humachar? Inquiring minds want to know, Ron, what do you think about Humachar? I can't tell you what I think because I've never actually tried it. I, I can tell you that I have a lot of viewers that um, have used it. And they've they've seemed to get good results with it, but I've never used it personally, so I can't really comment on it. Um, the ingredients look decent; they look like it's that it's um, that they should work well. Um, but I've just never I've never used it myself to be able to to really give an opinion on it. So, sorry, I'm not more help. Um, I am a fan of the Miramichi Green products. You know, I use Essential G, which is which is uh, uh, similar to or very similar to um, to Humachar. It has a bit more going for it in the sense that, um, from my understanding, Humachar is biochar and compost. Essential G is biochar, compost. It's got some silica in it. It's got some humate in it. It's got, um, it's got several, a couple different types of compost um, as, well as, as well as reclaimed coffee grounds as well. So as far as like a formulation that has more ingredients, a bit more of everything, um, I would, I would, in my opinion, I would say that Essential G has a bit more going for it, but I've never actually tested or used Humachar myself to be able to say, just to, to see what the results would be like. I have used Carbon Pro G, which is a closer competitor, like really Humachar and Carbon Pro G are they're both just um, bio, a biochar and compost blend uh, split. And uh, I got really good results with um, with Carbon Pro G. I really like Essential G better though, as far as, as, far as like the next step, the next phase or next iteration of, um, of in my opinion, granular solar moment technology. Uh, Essential G is really, really good. Is a really great product. So that's what I can comment on. I can't really comment on Humachar. Hopefully that helps some. Probably not too much, but uh, yes, you're for my opinion, and that's my opinion. There is my opinion. All right. So uh, next up, we got uh, G Free in the house saying, "What's up, Ron? Stripe Action Gang? What's going on, G Free? Hopefully you are doing well. Hopefully you're doing all right." And then uh, Robert is letting us know. So so Robert's gonna flex on us a little bit. He's gonna be like, "Hey, listen, man, I don't have one more." I got two. I kept the McLean. I still got the McLean. He says, so I still have the McLean debating on selling or converting it to the scalping duties. Um, 
here, if you want to, here's what you can do, right? Like you're going to be able to sell them a claim. You're going to find some, you'll find a buyer for it. If it were me, like you've already, from what I understand, I think in your email, you told me that the John Deere, you had it, uh, you had a fresh grind put on it. So it's all sharp, ready to go, ready to just, just to lay some, some mean stripe action. You don't want to take that mower that you just spent all that money on and just got it freshened up and then, you know, drop it down and scalp and maybe get into the dirt with it. And, you know, just, just, just put a lot of wear and tear on it. So at a minimum, I would keep the McLean for that. I would keep the McLean to do scalping and just to, just to compare, do a small comparison, like cut, you know, half your lawn one time with a McLean and half of your lawn with the John Deere, just to see, take a picture of it, send it to us. We can show everybody. And then if you want to sell it, you know, maybe you know, take the McLean and then get it freshened up. And then you'll, you'll be able, you will, you'll be able to sell it really quickly. It will not last on the market, you know, especially if you get it freshened up uh, after you scalp with it, um, you know, having a mower that's ready to go is, is a big deal for people that are trying to get into real mowing. So, uh, so yeah, if it were me, if it were me and your budget permits you to hang on to both of them for a while, uh, another two months, three months, say, say you waited until May to sell it. May is like a good time. Um, you know, that your grass should be growing well. That's what I would do. I would just, just do the comparison. Cause it's, it's, it'd be nice to have the video to have the pictures, just to be able to say, Hey, this is where I was. This is where I am now. And then you can turn around and flip the McLean if you want to. It, I, here's the thing. If you can afford to keep both of them, I might just keep both because I got to tell you, it, it would pain me. It would pain me. You want to see a grown man cry? It would pain me to drop the greens master down to, I don't know, man, a, a, a good scalp 0.3. I mean, that's not even getting in the dirt, but just getting it down really low and just having, and just, and just putting that kind of wear and tear on it, just beating it up like that. I just, it would, it would hurt. It would hurt. You know, the true cut, true cuts a tank. True cuts the, is like infantry. You know what I mean? I mean, the, the true cuts like infantry and the, the greens master like air force. Although it's like, it's like air force. That's, you know, that, that does a really good job. So if you guys in the armed forces, don't give me crap. I didn't serve, so I really can't talk about anybody. But as far as like, you know, the, as far as the, the, the true cut, just being able to take a ton of abuse and just take a, you know, and just for scalping work, it's a better machine suited for that. Uh, that's why I would, I keep it. So, um, so yeah, up to you. I wouldn't be in a, in a hurry to, to let to let go of it. At least not till like May time. So hopefully that helps uh, with your decision making process. All right, heartfelt fashion is in the house. She says, so I'm gonna get the super solid lawn leveling deal with your discount. You said we can order now and get it shipped later. Yes. So here's the thing: they are trying to get the orders. The, the, here's the thing: the whole reason behind why they're offering the discount so early in the year is because last year when Aprilish and May's time ro rolled around. Like they were slammed. They couldn't get drivers. They didn't have, they just literally didn't have the capacity to deliver as much as everyone was ordering. So they're, this year, what they're trying to do is allow people to order a little bit earlier. We get, they get up supplying a discount. So in this case, $30 off, which is a pretty good discount. Um, and then the, I, ideally, they want the, to deliver it within two weeks, right? You might be able to ask them to push it out a little bit, but really, two, within two weeks of, of, of ordering is when they are are wanting to get the deliveries, the deliveries done. So the deal is supposed to last until February 28th, the end of February. So if you can mark your calendar, um, if you want to wait a little bit longer, you can do that. I mean, it's, it's, it's up to you. It's not like they have a problem with product or, or having enough of the product. It's the delivery. That's the challenge, right? So, um, so yeah, you can, you can get it now. If you got a place to put it now, great. Because it's the, again, the bags aren't going to get, the, the product's not going to get wet or ruined or anything like that for being out, out in, uh, in the elements. I think I've got, I can show you exactly what it looks like. Heartfelt. So you can see there, it's like you have the big yellow bag and then you've got, it's tied off really well with this green bag that everything um, is in. It's like a tarpaulin material type material. So as far as it's staying dry, there's no issue with that. It's just a matter of if you have a place to put it, um, for, you know, really a couple of months while you wait, while you wait to do your top dressing work. So, you know, worst case, you can wait till the end of February or closer to mid-February to, to get your order in. But, uh, but yeah. And for those of you guys that don't know what I'm talking about, they're like, everyone that are in the live stream, they're like saying, discount? What? Discount on top dressing mix? What? Like, tell us more. Tell me more. So last week, Super Sod, um, they were on the show. If you guys didn't see last week's live stream, check it out. They were in here having a great time and, and answering tons of questions. They're offering a discount, a $30 discount for the, really for the level mix. Or if you just want this to straight soil three compost, you can get that as well too. But I would recommend the level mix if you're trying to do top dressing. I would not go with just the compost for, uh, for your top dressing work. The way to take advantage of that discount is to use my link right here. So this one um, that I'm putting in the chat now, soil three leveling mix. It's ron-henry.com forward slash top dressing. 
that will uh, save you thirty dollars on on the um, on the cost of the level in mix. And remember, those prices that you see on their website is delivered. So there's no delivery fee on top of that. That's that's all in. That's the material delivered to your door. So very cool stuff. It's a great product. I had awesome awesome results with it last year. So just something to keep in mind. But yeah, heartfelt. I mean, go ahead. I mean, if you got a place to put it, I would get it. Get your order done. Um, I'm going to be reaching out to them here probably the end of the month. Um, that's what I'm thinking, just to just to see whenever they can get get me uh, some bags for the front lawn. So that's that's my plan. I'm going to be using their leveling mix this year for a top dressing project. So, yep, uh, reach out to them and uh, and see what they can do for you. I appreciate the support. Thank you so much for using uh, the link. All right, next up, Tom B's in the house. He has a question about real mower height of cut. He says, hey, curious, if anyone here uses a real mower to cut higher than 2.5 inches, cut quality? Worried if I start cutting lower, I would run into other issues, especially without in-ground irrigation thoughts. Okay, so real mowers really do perform best, Tom, um, at lower cutting heights. Some of the manual ones, like the Fiskars or... Um, I don't even know if the Scots will go up that high. The, I mean, two and a half inches is pretty high for a real mower. Um, even if you could cut that high, it's going to, you're going to get a better cut. Uh, even if you can drop that by an inch, you went from like two and a half inches to an inch and a half. There's going to be a huge difference in just the way the, the turf looks if you're able to bring your height to cut down um, just a little bit. As far as issues without having air and ground irrigation, I really wouldn't sweat it, man. It's not like if you cut shorter, you're going to have to, you know, water the grass more and you need a lot more irrigation. And if, you know, going, in other words, whereas two and a half inches, the grass have been fine at one and a half inches, it's all going to be burn up and be all parched. Um, not, not really a thing, not really a thing. The thing you will actually find is that if you cut with a real, you start real mowing, right? And you start cutting shorter is the turf tends to, the canopy tends to tighten up. It gets more dense. So what that does, as far as like allowing the soil to hold on to water, it improves that because now you think about it. You take look at Bermuda as an example, right? At two and a half inches, it's not quite leggy at two and a half inches, but it's definitely not as dense as it is at um, an inch and a half. So as far as like sunlight, um, the ability for it to evaporate at, at uh, as far as just for the for the turf to lose water at taller cutting heights, at higher cutting heights, like two and a half inches or so, like you're not really taking advantage of almost like the, the slight insulating blanket that you get from, from cutting shorter. Like my, like I honestly have to put less water um, on my lawn um, with, uh, since I've been cutting short. And also if, in addition to that, something you can consider as well is a uh, moisture manager technology uh, called Hydrotain. So consider using Hydrotain on your lawn, incorporating that into your program. And that's also gonna do a lot for helping uh, reducing watering requirements. So I, I would not let height of cut be the thing that keeps you from um, from cutting. Sh um, I'm sorry, water from uh, from keeping you from cutting shorter, especially if you're not going crazy short. You're, I mean, you're talking about two and a half inches. Let's get that down to like an inch and a half. In if somewhere between an inch and an inch and a half, you will love the way the lawn looks um, much better. I can guarantee it. And at an inch and a half, you're still easily on that. You know, uh, twice a week mowing uh, pattern. So you're not cutting so short to where real mowing messes up your life. Like I, like last year I did that. Like when you, when you get it like half an inch, real mowing will start to ruin your life. Like literally you have to be out there every day to keep it looking nice. But it, you know, from an inch and a half to somewhere in that space, easy to live with every day. It's gonna look great. Your water requirements aren't gonna go up that much. And uh, as far as the product I was telling you about, Hydrotain, we carry that in the golf course lawn. So I did a video on it last year, I think. Can find it. So look up search. So you got a lick. You got the in a couple different options. You've got the liquid um, in like the the best value is the one that's seventy five dollars. But you need um, some kind of a of a sprayer to apply it. And then you've got the um, the hose end. And there's also available in a in a bag format. So it just depends on which way you want to go. I've got a video here again in the description. You can check out that tells you it talks all about watering. I have like an entire video on watering, guys. Um, some of that, some of the what's in that content actually made it also into the academy as well. I made some made some changes to it, but that's what's actually um, that made it into the watering module in the academy. But yeah, as far as a way for someone like you that doesn't have in ground irrigation, you want to mow a little bit shorter, and you, and you just don't want to have to worry about having to put water on the lawn all the time. A moisture manager is a great idea. I, I incorporated it last year for the first time, and it made a really big difference. So something to try out. Something to try out. And yeah, Kentucky bluegrass lawn. Yeah, I mean, still. I mean, even with it, everything I just said still applies. Mowing it a bit shorter 
again, assuming you have the time to do it, is um, it's gonna be it's gonna be better for the grass, like in every way. It's gonna look better. Um, it's just it's just a better deal. The biggest, the only negative to shorter cutting heights is you the dedication that's required. You need more time. You need to be able to put more time into taking care of the lawn. You're not gonna be able to mow it every two weeks and and have it look good. So, good question. Hopefully that helps and uh, let us know what you end up doing, what end of height you tend to, to you end up to go with. And then uh, Pirate2031 is chiming in. He says, what issues are you worried about, Tom? I don't think there are any power drill mowers that, that are good for mowing that high. Yeah, at, at that height, you're gonna be at push reel mower. I don't even think, I've never actually tried it, but I don't think the true cut will even go up that high. And the true cut can go fairly high for a powered reel mower. I don't think it'll do two and a half inches though. You might be able to get two out of it, but again, it's you're, you're using you're using it incorrectly if you're mowing that high with a uh, real mower. You really want to be shorter. Like even even lawns that are not top dressed, that are not even remotely super smooth, if you have a real mower with a, with a front roller on it, you can get by. An inch and a half is doable on pretty much every every lawn, um, even without top dressing. So just something to uh, to keep in mind. All right, Alex B is in the house. He says, I miss putting down biochar. I was uh, mostly on the application program, but I have to hold off until around March since the ground in my area has been frozen for roughly a month or two already. Yeah, so that's the only rule, guys. You know, as far as uh, some emails I've been getting from you guys, you've been saying, hey, Ron, I'm Jones and I gotta put something down the lawn. Can I, can I fertilize? I'm like, no. Can I, can I, you know, I, I, can't do, I can't do like the carbon kit right now. And I'm like, no, no carbon kit. No carbon kit, no nitrogen, not right now. But the one thing you can do Again, the caveat being assuming the ground isn't frozen is to apply uh, you know, granular carbon. So essential G is something I've been putting down on my lawn every month, literally every month since um, June of 20, what is it, we're 2022? 2020, and since June of 2020, every single month, my lawn has gotten biochar. It's gotten, it's gotten um, before it was Carbon Pro G, in the last year, it's been essential G. So as long as the ground isn't frozen, that's something you can do. Uh, there's only benefits to doing it. Um, but uh, yeah, if it's frozen, I, I wouldn't do that. You wouldn't. You shouldn't apply really anything to your lawn uh, when it's when it's frozen. So, so there you go. There you go, Alex. It'll be it'll warm up here soon enough, man. Don't you worry. Let not your heart be trouble. It'll come back soon. We got a couple of super chats down here. Let me run down here and grab those. We got one first from Lance F. I appreciate it, Lance. Super chat. We're Thank you so much for the support, sir. I really do appreciate that. Thank you for the super chat. And then next up, we got Mr. Josh Habib in the house. What's going on, Josh? Thanks for coming to hang out in the live super stream chat tonight. Received. Uh, he says, "Go Bills!" Yeah, man. So here's the thing: I am a Bills fan. They put they put it on. Um, who do they play? Who do they play? Uh, I know they played in Buffalo, but who who do they play? I forgot who they beat. Was it was it um, Pittsburgh? The Steelers. I know it was it was a very one sided game. I stopped. Well, I didn't even finish the game. I mean, I, I know I told you I was gonna be a Bills fan, but like by halftime it was so one sided. I said, hey, I'm going to sleep. So I didn't um, I didn't finish it. But yeah, good job. They can hopefully they can get it done. Maybe they can do what Atlanta can't do. The Falcons can't do. You know, which is uh, which is win. Oh, actually, while I'm while I'm I'm down here, I saw that uh, saw that Premier Lawns is in the house. What's going on, man? Thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream. So if you for, for those of you that don't know, Premier Lawns. Uh, he runs a YouTube channel in the UK, puts out a lot of really, really good content. So any of you guys that are in the UK, check him out. But also if you're looking for ways of producing a great lawn, um, using a lot of means that like the old school, a lot of the old school ways of doing it or in areas where you just don't have access to a lot of the chemicals that we do here in the States, uh, you know, check out uh, check out Robbie's um, his, his content. A lot of it is it's really really good stuff, and it's a great way for those of you that want to take more of an organic approach, you know, uh, to producing a great lawn. Uh, him, uh, Garden, I forget the guy, I forget his name. It's, I think his name is Mark, but Garden Lawn Care or something like that. Um, also has some really good content. But yeah, thanks for coming to hang out, Robbie. Appreciate you. It's got to be late in the UK, so I super appreciate you coming to hang out in the uh, the live stream. Thanks for the support. Hopefully all is going well with you. All right, next up we got Fairway Bermuda, the new YouTube channel that just launched from Mr. Daryl Tunstall, where he says, hey, what's up, Ron and Lawn Team? It's cold. It is cold, man. It is cold. You saw what you saw what it did. You see, you see how you see how the cold weather did me, right? You saw how, what it did. I'm not sure how long you've been in here, um, uh, Fairway Bermuda, but it did me wrong, man. I mean, I, I was I was like, you know, about to, I, I was, here's the thing, guys. I was thinking about like, you know, breaking the backpack spray out here in a few weeks if it kept that that warming trend, but no, that snow, this turned my lawn back into that. That's the lawn today. So 
Mother Nature did me wrong, man. But uh, such is such is life. Such is life. All right. So this is another good question to hear about mowing. Lance F asked the question: How often should you backlap your mower? So here's the thing, Lance. I never actually backlap my mowers. I don't. So what I what I tend to do is um, I. I'm very, I am religious about making sure I don't run over anything other than grass. So if I see like a, like anything, if I see a twig, anything in the lawn, I will stop the mower and pick it up. So I don't, if you only cut grass with the mower, right? If you only cut grass with the mower, you keep it out of the dirt, you don't scalp with it, anything like that. Especially if you're using a greens mower, uh, you know, they, they tend to hold their edge fairly well. What I do is, um, you know, every couple of weeks, I will, again, depending on how much I've been mowing, I will go out and I'll do the paper test. I'll check it, see, make sure it's still cutting paper all, the, all across. As I get more into the summer, I do it more frequently. But initially when I start off the season, it'll be once every every week, every couple of weeks, I'll, I'll go out there and just check and make sure it's still cutting paper. And if it's not, I will make an adjustment. I'll, you know, I'll go in on the bed bar, adjustment screws, uh, a click, and if it starts cutting paper, good to go. Back, life is good. Let's start mowing again. If I, um, if when, whenever I go in on the bed bar adjustment screws and I begin, I'm feeling the resistance. And I can tell that, hey, I'm starting to get, I'm starting to get some contact between the reel and bed knife and it's still not cutting paper. That's when I just take the mower in and just have it, have the, the reel and bed knife freshened up. I don't, I don't backlap it. I just, that's what I do. Um, so, you know, I, talking to, uh, to Joey at, at, um, at Jerry Pate, he's of the, he's of the same opinion. I asked him, he says, yeah, something, if you want to go out and invest in a kit and you want to do it, yes, it can preserve, it can uh, freshen up the edge a little bit. Um, really what it's really good for doing is if there's any burrs, uh, that you, that you, that you've picked up on the, uh, reel or bed knife, it's good for helping to remove those. But really same thing I'm telling you is what he told me. The best thing you can do is only cut grass with your mower. If you only, if you are very religious, don't run over pine cones or anything like that, just cut grass with it. And that's all you really, you really shouldn't have to do a bunch of backlapping, especially for the way we use them, right? Golf courses, uh, might do that because they, they run the these machines way harder than we do. But for the average homeowner, if you get a good sharpen at the beginning of the season, you don't mow anything but grass with it. You know, a, a good sharpen really should last you a season. You really shouldn't have to go in um, halfway through the season. The only reason why I did it last year is because I got into some sand. So I, um, I did not raise the height of cut up enough. I thought, eh, you know, maybe, you know, a tenth will be enough. It wasn't. And I got into a little bit of sand, and if you run over sand in your uh, with a with a mower, with a real mower, it doesn't take very much. You can make literally just a couple of passes where you're getting into sand, and it will dull it. You, then you're then you're going in for a sharpening. But as far as um, you know, backlapping it, not something I've really had to do um, on on any of my mowers. I think I did it once with the true cut. It was also a pain in the neck to do. So I just I just if it, when it stops cutting paper, I just take it in and get it sharpened. So hopefully that helps. Great great question. All right, next up, Tommy Bennett is in the house. He says, what's your thoughts on rolling the yard when the season kicks, on, kicks off? Lots of differences of opinions there. Okay, so I will give you my thoughts on the, on the matter, Tommy. I am not a fan of doing it. I've done it one time, one time. Um, did it make a difference as far as smoothing things out a bit? Yes, it did. I mean, as far as like the line, you could tell it was a little bit smoother. But one of the things that, that we're trying to do on home lawns for the most part is like stay away from compaction. Right, compaction um, hurts drainage. Uh, there's it, it pre prevents it makes it harder for any fertilizers or anything else that we apply to get down into the soil and begin working. So when you're rolling the lawn, while that makes sense for golf course greens, right, where they they cut the lawns every day and they roll, most greens get rolled every day, it makes sense for that because it's a playing surface, right? They want it to be as smooth as possible, um, and that's the you know rolling it helps accomplish that that purpose. But for a home lawn. I'm not a huge fan of them, mainly because most people can't really get um, a roller that's heavy enough to make a to make a really a big enough difference. Um, and it's just again, you're introducing compaction. You're introducing compaction. Like if you have like a like a pitch that you're maybe playing um, like horseshoes on, or you're playing lawn pool, and you want the lawn to be a bit firmer, maybe in that case. But as a matter of practice to do like all the time, I'm just not a fan of it. And it for, to me, you're working against yourself, right? Again, golf courses can get away with it because they aerate regularly. Um, the mission or what or what the the green is designed to do requires that. But for most of us are doing on our home lawns, it's just an unnecessary step that, in many ways, in my opinion, uh, it caught, there's more negatives, there's more downsides to it than upsides. So 
That's my opinion. I, I totally get what you're saying as far as there being differing opinions on the matter, but I did I did it once. It did make a difference, but it's not something that I would do regularly. Kind of like verticutting. I did verticutting once. It did thin out the lawn a bit. Not something that I um I do a lot. Now, here's the thing. If you ask Robbie, who's in the chat, he will probably disagree with me on verticutting. I think in the UK, that's one thing they do very often. They, like monthly, they'll get out there and they'll be verticutting as a way to keep the lawns healthy. Uh, I, one, I don't have access to a verticutter to be able to do that. And the one time that I did it, it wasn't, you know, wasn't a huge night and day difference other than just thinning out the canopy some. So there you go. Hopefully that helps. Um, let us know if you decide to go forward with rolling it, what kind of results you get. But for me, I just haven't found it to be a huge, a huge bunch of upsides for that. All right. Uh, let me get up. I got to speed up. We got some more questions. Got a bunch of questions in here and I'm going too slow. All right. Um, so we got uh, Gundy Grasshopper in the house. He says, I have a section of my 2419 lawn here in Decula that gets about two hours of sunshine due to being blocked by homes. Should I overseed or resod with a different type of sod? Okay, so if you're only getting, let me read this again. You should, you're getting two hours of sunlight. You're going to have a hard time with anything growing there. Because um, here's the thing, Gunny, right? The general rule is if the existing grass isn't growing now, like replacing it with a different grass type. And a good example. So you have Bermuda right now, right? Which two hours of sunlight is not going to get it done. Even if you, if the Bermuda is like super thin to where it's pretty much just dirt and just bare, like if you put zoysia in there, it's still not going to do very well. You know what I mean? Two hours of sunlight just really, really isn't enough for grass to thrive. It just isn't. And I guess you said it's due, it's being blocked by homes. I don't know, man. Uh, I mean, you could try zoysia if you wanted to, but I mean, if, if you're if you're sure that all you're getting is two hours of sunlight, I would hate for you to go out and spend a bunch of money uh, putting sod down only to you know to have it die or just not not do well. So overseeding or seeding at all would not. That's that's not that's a no go. I would not I would not try that. You just don't have enough. You just don't have enough energy. You don't have enough sunlight to really really allow it to take off and do well. You know what I mean? So. You know, if I had a picture of it to see what you're talking about, if it's a really, like I've seen some some subdivisions where if the houses are closer together, like the area between the houses doesn't get much sunlight. In that case, you know, gravel or a mulch bed or some kind of some kind of like lawn treatment, some kind of decoration kind of treatment to kind of make the area look nice um, is an option, but grass is gonna struggle. Like gra grass needs sunlight, like full stop. Like, you know, any even shade tolerant grass does better with sunlight. And as far as two hours of sunlight, that's going to be a challenge. That's going to be that's going to be a challenge. Bermuda definitely won't do it. I don't I don't know that zoysia is even going to do well with only two hours of sunlight. So, if you want to try it, if it's a small enough area and you want to give it a go, you can. But I don't think it's going to be. I don't think you're going to you're going to get a great result personally. Gen generally, as a general rule, if grass isn't growing there now, and I mean all things being equal, like the soil isn't trash and there's not like you know some other issue that's causing there to be a problem, if you know the soil is okay and everything else is fine. Um, if grass isn't growing there now, replacing the grass type isn't, isn't like, especially if you're sticking with the same type of grass. If you go from Bermuda to Zoysia or Bermuda to St. Augustine, it's not going to be a night and day difference. You know, we need, you need sunlight for grass to grow. So hopefully, uh, that helps. Sorry, I don't have a better answer for you, but, um, but yeah, that's, I don't want you to get waste a bunch of money chasing something that's probably not going to work. It's probably not going to work. All right, uh, que, pasa, que pasa la ninjas? Thank God it's Friday. Tranquilo, man, tranquilo. It's relaxing. About to, it's about to be the top of the hour, so I can have a sip of my uh, my lemonade in my official li uh, live stream cup, uh, courtesy of Mr. Josh Abib. I get to play some music while I take a sip here and beg you guys for some more likes. Uh, but yeah, all is good, man. It's a little bit cold outside, but it's not snowing, so that's good. All right, next up. Ludwig Butler is here and says, hey, Ron, I, thanks, Ron. I'm very interested in the Lawn Academy. I will sign up this week. I hope it's idiot proof. I could jack, <laughs> I could jack up a lawn, LOL. Does the Academy have a Facebook group? Yes and yes. It is very simple. Um, so here's the thing. A lot of my YouTube content is, very, is, is long form. Last year, I tried to tighten things up a little bit. But a lot of it's a lot longer. I'm like telling jokes and just having a grand time and talking about things and pointing the camera all over the place. With the Academy, the goal was to tighten things up to where, like to give you what you need to know to be successful, to teach certain topics that really, in a, like in other words, a good example, there's a module in there on soil, which is there's actually probably one of the biggest modules is on soil like on micronutrients and macronutrients and how they work and the importance of soil testing, all this kind of stuff. I could do a video on that for YouTube. It would get like three views because because only people that are really, really into their lawns 
who really care about that kind of stuff. So that's why that kind of stuff is reserved for the course. It is very simple. It's a very methodical process that I lay out. It's very easy to follow. The Facebook group is also like some of the some of the feedback I've gotten from um, members that have been in there since you know since it launched in March say that the Facebook group like the content's great and the, but the Facebook group is one of the best one of the best parts of it. And now with the discount that you guys are going to get as far as like ten percent off of uh, Miramichi Green products, and I'm going to try to expand that to a few other things in the golf course lawn store here soon. Literally, there's a way for it to pay for itself. So. You know, depending, you know, if you're really following the program and you're really, you're buying products regularly for your lawn, it's literally the, the cost of, the cost of the course will pay for itself, um, you know, in a, it can in a season, depending on, uh, on how, um, on how much product you're buying, how big your lawn is. If you're going to do it, I'm trying to save you guys some money because there is like golfcourselawn.com, right? So there's a couple ways to get it. Oh, you're going to make me go and show you guys this. So if you go to golfcourselawn.com, which is the main, which is just the, um, the course, right? Where, where I talked through, this is like the, the out, outlines, the process explains everything that's in it. Like, what do you get? Talked about lawn equipment, fertilization, weed control, top dressing, you know, some, um, reviews from the members and then everything that's in it, like 20 videos, exclusive, um, access, all this kind of stuff, right? Your, 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 your application calendar. A lot of you guys seem to really want a lawn application calendar. So that's in there, the Facebook group. Um, and then, and again, something that's been recently added are the member only discounts. Here's the thing though, guys, if you, and this is mainly for, you know, the live stream folks and people that will probably figure it out online as well too, when they go to the store. But if you're going to do it, even though it'd be more money for me, don't go buy it at golfcourselawn.com. Go to the store and buy something like buy, like you need prodiamine or you need, like, say you're going to buy some product like buy that and then save yourself $45 on it. So the price of the course becomes, what is it? Like a 105? It becomes a lot, it becomes, you save $45 literally. So um, that is how I would do it. What I would actually do if you're really trying to game the system, and this again, I'm, not, I'm kind of working against myself here. What I would do is say if you're gonna go out and you're gonna buy, like I were gonna buy like say the, the carbon kit, right? Which is $99, right? And you're gonna buy some essential G and a bunch of other stuff. What I would do if it were me is I would buy like one thing, get the, get the course, get like access to the academy, and then you're going to get the discount added to your, your account profile um, in the store and then go back and place another order for all your stuff at the discounted price. So that's what I would do. But, uh, you know, again, again, the whole thing is trying to add value um, for you guys to where you're in the course, you're in the academy, you're, you're going to be using a lot of the products I talk about anyway. Why not make it, why not pass some of that on to you guys and make it possible to... Um, for you to recoup the cost or it doesn't cost you anything. Because again, the, the course, I really, it's really a way for me to help the really hardcore people. And I, you guys are investing in me. So I'm going to invest in you guys. And that's what the discount is, is all about, right? To help, to help it make it take, take, take some of the edge off of um, making your lawn look great. So yeah, definitely Lendrick, let me know. Um, you know, if you have any other questions, you can hit me up here at ron at golfcourselawn.com. But I think I've given you all the info you should need to make a great decision. Again, uh, if you guys, to save money, go to the store, buy something. You're going to have the upsell with, for the course at a discounted price, and then you're good to go. Hopefully that helps. All right, next up, we got Jinwan Park in the house. What's going on, Jin Wan? Hopefully you're doing well. So hopefully you're in a part of the country that's warmer than where I am. He says, hey, Ron, how are you? I'm doing well. Cannot complain. Cannot complain. It says, looking to purchase the Sun Joe D Thatcher. Any thoughts or recommendations? Not personally. I've never personally used it. However, I've seen, um, I've had a couple of viewers that have gotten one. So actually one of them, one person that got one, she was a, she was in the Golf Course Lawn Academy. She actually was. She still is in the Golf Course Lawn Academy. And she got one of them and loved it. Like she raves about this thing. Now here's the thing. You got to have a big extension cord. Actually, I'm going to ask your question first. I want to have my, my music. You have to have an extension cord to be able to like to to that's long enough to cover your lawn. So that's the only a bit of a negative. But as for the price, the thing punches way above its weight. You know what I mean? And again, I'm not making any money off of it. I'm not. I mean, I've never used one personally, but uh, several YouTubers that I respect and know personally that I've spoken to about it like it. I have again someone that's in the Golf Course Lawn Academy that's used it and she loves it. So you know, again, if you have an extension cord. It's a great way to dethatch your uh, to dethatch your lawn. So you know, again, without even using it myself, it just I I don't have a problem with uh, with recommending it or or you know telling um telling you you're probably gonna have a good result with it. Maybe it's something I can try out this year. Maybe I can get one of those and uh, and show you guys running it on my lawn. Although it's because my lawn is that's gonna be it's gonna be a long long uh, long day. But yeah, I I would I would give it a shot, Jin Wan. It's worth it's worth giving a shot. Hopefully that uh, hopefully that helps. 
All right, Robert Wallace is in the house. What's going on, Robert? Hopefully you're doing well, sir. Happy Friday. Happy Friday to you too, sir. And guys, here's the thing. It's the top of the hour. My throat's getting dry a little bit, so it's time to get some lemonade. I'm going to put some tunes on. And here's the thing. While we have this really kind of awkward, quiet time, um, while the music's playing, I'm drinking my lemonade, you guys can reach over, move your mouse over ever so gently and touch that like button. Great way to support the channel. Doesn't cost you guys anything. I'd really appreciate it. <sighs> nom nom. Love it. All right, so next up we have a question here, a comment from Jesus Prado, or Prado, sorry if I got your name wrong, you, I apologize. You said, hey Ron, I have pure perennial ryegrass and I wanna put down Arden 15 in the spring. Can I use glyphosate to kill the ryegrass then the following week put down the seed? You can, you can, yeah. Um, I would give it maybe a little bit longer. Give it, uh, well, a, a week is probably enough time, but just if you want, if you can kill the glyphosate a little bit, kill the, um, the ryegrass a bit sooner, and give yourself like a little two, like a two week window in between before you do the Arden 15, uh, that would work fine. Um, the the thing, the, um, yeah, I mean, cause really that's that's an inexpensive way to get rid of the ryegrass. There are other ways like uh, Celsius, but that's more expensive. And since you're you're not trying, you don't have any, you don't have any Bermuda currently, you don't have any grass or anything that you're trying to keep, you're just trying to smoke it out, then yeah, glyphosate is a, uh, is a good option. And then you're saying, um, I heard that glyphosate doesn't affect Arden 15 seed. Yeah, it doesn't. It shouldn't affect really any seed per se. It shouldn't affect any seed, not just Arden 15. It's not like Arden 15 is engineered to not be affected by glyphosate. This is that when it's in as a seed, um, if there's no plant, if there's nothing growing, if there's no foliage, like glyphosate shouldn't it shouldn't have it shouldn't negatively impact it. But I would still give it a couple of weeks. I would do like good example. If you did um, the ryegrass is going to be loving life, like say mid March into April. So if you if you nuke the lawn in um, the end of March, and then you know you're not going to get all of it. You're not going to kill all of it the first time. So you're going to knock it back. Most of it's going to die. If you can give it a little bit more time, so so say another two weeks, anything that's left, you maybe do another glyphosate application, and then do the Arden 15. Um, uh, seeding because here's the thing: you need heat. You need the heat for it to, to to grow in. Like it, I'm not sure what part of the country you're in, but unless you are in Florida, it's not really going to be hot enough in March and even early April to get quick germination out of Arden 15. Really, you want soil temps to be 65 degrees or higher. So I'm answering the questions if you were my neighbor. And for um, for me, for me to get good germination, that meant applying or seeding or overseeding in. Um, in uh, early May. So the first week of May, it was like literally the last, the weekend between May, April and May is when I did my, uh, my seeding and it worked out really well. So, uh, so yeah, that's what I would do. Glyphosate is an inexpensive way to do it. Space it out. And, uh, and you know, again, if you're going to get rid of the rye grass in, um, you know, late March, early April, and then do the Arden 15 once it has a time to grow in, that would be, that would be ideal. The only negative is, is your lawn's going to look like absolute Hades while, while you're waiting for temps to get a little bit higher, right? So you can have like a dead lawn. So that's something to keep in mind. You know, I don't know if you have wife or girlfriend or whatever to explain to them that that's part of the process if you're, for what you're trying to do. So that's the only, that's the only negative to what I'm, I'm, um, I'm suggesting, but yeah, hopefully that helps. Hopefully that helps. And uh, Justin is chiming in. He says, hey, I, I do. I do fly RC and mainly helicopters. Nice, man. So here's, dude, I've been out of the game for such a long time. I used to fly helicopters before fly barless became really a thing. So I had like what I had. My first one was I had a Kyosho Concept 30 SRX. I don't know how far back you go, but it's a really old helicopter, 30 size helicopter. Then I had an Ergo and I had a Cult Baron. Uh, cup that I got into the big boys, got into some miniature aircraft like the Fury. I had some of those. Uh, what else did I end up, what did I end up getting? What, what else did I have? Um, had like a blade. I played around with a lot of different stuff, but I got it to the 90 size, um, helis. Uh, and that's where, that's where, when I got out of it. So when the synergies and the newer ones, the newer, the newer range or newer technology that became like fly barless became a thing. That's when I got out of, uh, out of helicopters. Very cool, man. Good to see that you're, you're still in it and having fun with it. It's a fun hobby. It's expensive. You guys think lawn is expensive? Get into RC helicopters. Get into anything RC. Literally, you can have thousands of dollars flying around in the air. So, so yeah, lawn care is much much cheaper uh, than uh, than RC, and almost as much fun. Almost as much fun. Helicopters are a ton of fun. 
We used to fly a lot of 3D and stuff. All right. Very, very cool. All right, so Alex B is in the house. He says, I have a battery, uh, leaf blowers, head trimmers, stick edger, and et cetera. They do well. I'm just not selling the performance and more so the runtime with the heavier duty equipment in my experience so far. I could see that. So, I mean, on the greens mowers, like I know John Deere and Toro have electric uh, uh, equivalents of like the 1600. And I imagine they work very well, but I mean, they also are very expensive, right? You're talking about like a five figure piece of equipment depending on the options you get on it. So, you know, it's battery technology eventually will get there to where it just makes more sense to run battery powered equipment. But I don't think the battery tech is quite there yet to where it can replace gas power from a standpoint, on most lawns anyway, from a standpoint of um, runtime. I think from a power standpoint, they're, they're already there or even in some cases even exceeding, but uh, runtime is the big thing. You don't wanna have that anxiety when you're out there on the lawn doing something and then, you know, the battery goes dead and sinks not not good all right wind chariot is saying hey bro it's global warming if you live long enough you won't be able to tell georgia from north dakota we'll be we'll all be flying to south america for the winter might happen might happen you never you never know i mean the thing is the earth has changed forever like there was an ice age at one point when the entire planet was covered in ice right so i mean i i i, I am not saying i don't necessarily believe it that that the uh the temperature patterns over time change I don't know how much of it that we are actually doing. We, we might be the cause of all of it, but we, but maybe not, you know? I mean, I think in many ways we, we over, um, we have an overestimation of ourselves, of our importance and, and how much influence we have. Kind of like with grass, right? Like the one thing I always tell you guys when it comes to mowing your lawn, what I always say, I say, yes, absolutely get a soil test done, get the correct products and fertilizer for your lawn. But the most important thing is to mow it. Like mow it regularly. And even if you do nothing, let's say you don't do anything. Say you don't get a soil test done. You don't buy fertilizer. You don't do any of this stuff, but you just mow your lawn and you mow it often. It's it's going to look better than if you didn't mow it often. And you got to figure, right? For the most part, grass has been growing all over this planet long before we're here and it'll be growing probably long after we're gone. So, um, you know, we don't, we don't need to necessarily overcomplicate things. But I digress. We got a Roll Tide in Alabama fan in the house tonight. Saying, hey, Friday, hope it's Friday, hope all things safe. Mostly a rain event in South Henry County. Yep, mostly rain. Uh, we were supposed to, they are saying freezing rain here and maybe even snow, but things changed where we're not going to get it. I'm not complaining. So, uh, so yeah, they can keep the snow. We got it. We got our, our snow last, we got our snow last, uh, last week. We don't need it. We got, you know, that's our snow for the year. We, we, we are due to have snow once per year. Every, all the kids in the neighborhood got to go slide down all the little muddy hills you know, and that's it. We're done. Not till next year. Okay, next up we have um, uh, Wind Chariot saying, Ron, should we be switching up pre-emergent to keep their efficacy intact? I've read they can become less effective if continuously used. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so some of that is, Wind Chariot, is um, with prodiamine, depending on the application rate um, that you're using, you could use up your annual allocation, the, the, annu the annual limits of it in the spring, depending on how heavy you put it down. Good example, like when we did Alex's lawn, last year, we did max rate in the spring. So we needed to do something, use something else in the fall. So he used um, Dithyop here in like a gra in granular form on his lawn for his fall pre-emergent. But if you are not, but there's nothing that says you can't use Prodiamine all year. You just have to make sure that, you know, you don't go over the annual limit. The, in, in, in the label, it clearly spells out what that is. So um, if you split up your your um, your application, like the, the amount you're putting down between spring and fall, you absolutely can do that. As far as um, causing problems with um, the the weeds or, or plant life becoming, getting a resistance to it, I've not heard or seen that with prodiamine as yet. Um, it still is smart. To your point, it still is smart to alter and to mix things up to keep the weeds guessing. So if you can do, literally, if you can do dithyop here, um, in the spring and um, prodiamine in the fall or vice versa, that can that can work well. If you can go really high dollar and use like Spectacle Flow, like that's that's the thing too. Like mixing it up is a good idea. I um, But around here, every lawn care service in the springtime is gonna be putting down prodiamine. And in the fall time, they're in the fall, they're also gonna be putting down prodiamine. So at least the ones in my area, that's what they do. They don't, they don't, you know, they they use, or I shouldn't say that's not all of them. That's not that's not true. I know of two that switch up to um a spectacle flow. I know, I know of a couple that use prodiamine in the spring and the fall. So if you can make if you can change it, if you can alter it between seasons better, 
Not strictly necessary though. So, and again, you have two economical options. You know, dithiopyr and prodi and dithiopyr and um and prodiamine is enough to go back and forth and and get a good result. It's so hopefully that helps. Um, I did um, coastal in the fall, so I will be doing uh, dimension or di or dithiopyr in uh, the springtime. That's what I'm going to be doing on Alex's law. We're going to be doing prodiamine again. So I'm going to be getting. Uh, dimension and he's going to be or dithyopyr and he's going to be getting uh, coastal. That's what we're going to be doing on his lawn. So just to alter it, just to keep things guessing. Hopefully that helps. Good question. Great comment. Appreciate it. All right. Next up we have Kelby Ruiz in the house. He says, hey, Ron, just got soil test back and I am super low in P, super low in phosphorus. Um, he says, what are your thoughts on applying uh, dimonium phosphate 184060 in Texas? I can't wait for the season to start. I think it's a good option. I mean, if it's if that's um, if you can you have access to that and you want to go with um, uh, as an option to to help raise your uh, your phosphorus levels, sure. I would wait until the grass is coming out of dormancy, like it's starting to actively grow before putting that down. Uh, you know, you don't want to you don't want to be slamming the lawn with a bunch of um, putting down a bunch of a nitrogen in, in the soil when the grass isn't actively growing. So yeah, as far as your fertilizer, your starter fertilizer for the season, that's a, that's a good option. That's a good option. Yep. I would absolutely, I'd absolutely do that. Okay. So I'm seeing the results of, of the, of the, um, poll I asked for. So we got Satoro, we got a John Deere. So we got one and one, we got another John Deere. So that's two to one. We got an Alex. So we have, you know, sophisticated more, the Alet. We have the Alet, the British mower. And then the Toro, so it's kind of split. It's kind of split fairly evenly. Then we got also um, Robert with the Toro as well. So yeah, looks like it's uh, it's uh, it's um, it's split between, across, across those. Yeah, so you can get a great result with either one of them, but uh, looks like you guys are divided. All right, uh, Josh Bronco says, have you reached out to Toria to test their Flex 21E? I have not, I don't, here's the thing. If any of you guys know who at Toro I should reach out to, uh, by all means, send them my way. Like, here's my email address, Ron at golfcourselawn.com. Toro is a huge company. I have no idea who I would even, like, uh, call or email and say, hey, I know you guys don't know me. I'm really a big fan of your products, and, like, I, I mow a lot of grass, and I have this YouTube channel where I talk about, like, you know, lawn care stuff, and would love the opportunity to test out one of your Flex 21 E's. I think I can make a compelling argument. They may or may not agree, but uh, but yeah, if you guys have any contacts at Toro or have anyone I can reach out to, email me, holler at me, let me know. Send me an email and I will uh, reach out to them and, and see because I'm definitely always out to try out try out new stuff, even if they don't let me keep it, which they probably won't, but even if they let me just to get one to borrow just to make some content on it, just to try out an electric mower and see what it's like, I'd be, I'd be down for that. It'd be cool to try. All right, uh, Alex B says he's a slightly older Alec Kensington, so neither brand for me. Hope to get a Toro GM eventually. Yeah, so you, we have, so actually it's pretty even. We have two Alec's, we have a couple of John Deere's and a couple of Toro's. So you guys are, are split fairly evenly as far as, as far as real mowers go. Very cool. All right, uh, and then uh, Dwin Chariot is chiming in. So the, the person that asked me, I think it was Daniel that asked about uh, Humachar. He says, Humachar is good, but ever since switching to Essential G and Carbon Pro G, I haven't looked back. So there you go. So you have someone that has used both Humachar in the past and now has gone to Essential G and Carbon Pro G and they have not moved back. So that's that's a, that's all I can tell you. That's a, that I ain't telling them to say that. That's literally someone that has, uh, that used to use Humachar and switch over to Essential G. And I can tell you like Essential G is a great product. Like I, even between Carbon Pro G and Essential G, I see a difference. Again, they're both both excellent. But Essential G, I really, I am really, really a big fan of it. Really big fan of that of that product. Like that stuff. Okay, so next up we have a a question here from um, Botros Marzuk. I apologize if I'm butchering your last name. Not doing it intentionally. It says Ron, can you send me a link to your pre-emergent product for the spring and a good fertilizer for some Bermuda grass? I can do that. So I think I've already shown you guys uh, the pre-emergent that um, I recommend. There's a couple of options for that. So we can let's switch over to. The um, wrong one, wrong uh, thingy. Let me find here and back. All right. So as far as pre-emergent, we'll take that first. Thing one, pre-emergent. You got a couple of options. If your lawn is um, is five thousand or six thousand square feet or less, you can go with this. You can save yourself some money. 
20 bucks, $21, you get the prodiamine um, in a water dispersible granule format. This is a great option uh, to, go, to go with. If you have a larger lawn or you just want more value for money, in other words, you just wanna be able to stretch what you, what, you, um, what you put down a bit further, then the bigger tub is a better option. Like this is like literally the smaller one treats 6,000 square feet. The larger one at, okay, so let's put it away. The, the small one is $21. The larger tub is $67, $68. The small one treats 6,000 square feet. The larger tub treats up to four to five acres, depending on, um, no, that's not true, depending on application rate. So for cool season grass, it'll treat four to five acres. For warm season grass, it's like, I did the math, it's something like 90,000, it's like two acres for Bermuda. So it's a ton. An acre is like 40, 43,000 square feet thereabouts. So it's like for three times the price, you're getting like way more product, way more coverage. So it just depends on which what you decide to go with. So we've covered pre-emergent. Those are your options for that. And in the links of both of those products on the golf course lawn store, there's a video that shows you how to mix it, how to apply it, all that fun stuff. All right, now for fertilizer. Assuming you've done a soil test, and let me switch back over, and you have done a soil test, right? I know, I know you're asking me this based on soil test results, but if you, you know, if some of you've done a soil test, and uh, you're just looking for a great fertilizer to apply. Uh, I'm a big fan of the of Humic Max, man. This is what I've been using over the course of the season. Uh, this is the, the fertilizer that I recommend in the Golf Course Lawn Academy. I have yet to have anyone, anyone that's used this fertilizer that has had that not had great things to say about it. Everyone that's used this has had nothing but good things to say about Humic Max. Um, so you can see it there if I get my ugly face out of the way. You can see it there on on the lawn, that's 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 actually my lawn, and that's uh, from using that on the lawn this season. And uh, one bag covers up to 15,000 square feet. There's also a video here talking all about it. And I've got uh, spreader settings in the description here. So if you've got a Scotts, you've got, uh, you know, we've got the ones that are on the bag, but also you've got one of the more um, consumer grade spreaders, ones that a lot of you guys have. I also went out and did some calibration and got some numbers for there for you there as well for that. So Humic Max is what I would recommend. Again, awesome, awesome, awesome fertilizer. I have not had anyone that's ever used it that has had anything bad to say about it. In addition to being a quality fertilizer, actually, I didn't even talk about the formulation. Let's do that real quick. The formulation, which is a 1608, but the nice thing as well is this also has 8.9% um, humic acid. So it's a combination product. You have, a fer you have a fertilizer and a great formulation that's great for spoon feeding your lawn and then it's also got you know right at nine percent humic acid which is great for improving nutrient uptake improving microbial activity so it's, just, it's an excellent excellent product just a really really quality product uh from lebanon turf really excited that last year they took the chance on us and allow us to carry it so uh so yeah if you're looking for something awesome to run in your lawn i cannot say enough good things about uh about humic max so there you got you got two options you got humic max and you have the prodiamine. There's links. Um, again, go to the Golf Course Lawn Store. It's on. Give me on the on the the front page. And there's there's videos in the descriptions for those products that'll tell you how to mix it, how to apply it, and all that fun stuff. So hopefully that helps. Hopefully that helps. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you. You know, while I'm at it, if you're going to do that, if you're going to do, um, if you want to also add a kicker to it, right? Because I can tell you how I use it, right? So I use Humic Max, but I also use Turfplex. So. I run a spoon feeding program where I run the granular at a relatively low rate, about half a pound of nitrogen per thousand. And then to supplement that, to supplement the Humic Max, I use, where is it here? I use this, which is Turfplex, which is a quick release, fast release uh, fertilizer, which is a 22.3, but I use that at like a 10th of a pound of nitrogen. So it's a very, a very just a taste, just a taste of liquid uh, fertilizer that really helps keep the green, uh, pretty much an even green, um, doesn't cause excessive growth, and it's what I used uh, last year. It's what's taught in the Golf Course Lawn Academy, um, and everyone that's used that that process has gotten really good results with it. So something else to consider, it is more involved, it does take more time, because you're out there with a granular, putting on the granular fertilizer, and then you know once, twice a month, you're then doing a, uh, you're spraying the liquid, but you know, you're gonna be out there anyway, so why not, why not? So that's, hopefully that helps, it gives you some um, some good, um, good places to start. Uh, Botros, um, again, if you have any other questions, hit me up, ron at golfcourselon.com, or just leave an additional comment in the live stream. I'll do my best to help you out. But that is what I would recommend. All right, next up, Kelby Ruiz says, uh, got a new Honda Rotary last year. Is it possible to need to replace the blades 
for next season. Uh, it's possible, totally possible. I only cut the I only cut grass, and so I don't see no damage worth changing it. Yeah. So here's the thing, um, rotary. If you ask like Alan or um, lawn, yes, lawn care now, or you ask uh, Bermuda Grass Central or any any of the lawn care YouTubers that primarily use rotary mowers, they will tell you that one of the things that people do not do with rotary mowers often enough is sharpen their mower blades. So even though you got it last year. Um, it, you need to sharpen it. Like, I mean, really, uh, even, even more so than a real mower, I would say for a rotary, you know, if you can plan like two sharpens throughout the season. So if you did one in the, in the beginning of the season, say March, when you first start cutting, um, one in June ish, and then another one, like late July, early August, that's going to get you the best result in your lawn. Because the problem, the problem with a rotary mower is when those blades get dull, they they do they actually cause a lot of problems in the lawn. They they they, tear, they tend to tear the grass um, a lot, which which promotes causes issues with um, with disease. It causes it to look unsightly because it's gonna the grass you're gonna you'll you'll cut the grass and then you'll notice it just kind of turns brown. It has like a brown haze over it. Literally, that's all the injury you're causing from cutting the grass with with dull mower blades. So even though you got the mower last year and you're very disciplined about only cutting grass with it, yes, I wouldn't say you necessarily need to replace the blade but you need to sharpen it. Some people don't even bother um, sharpening it because rotary mower blades are so inexpensive. They could just, they just, they just teach, you know, they throw them out. I don't know that I would necessarily do that. Um, if you have a grinder and if you want to, if you're, you know, a little bit technically inclined and can sharpen it, go ahead and do that. But to answer your question, Kelby, I absolutely would. I would either replace it or sharpen it um, as a season be for, for the start of the season. So what you can do is if you got a new mower blade, if you're planning to scalp your lawn, which I don't know if you are, I'm not sure what height you're cutting at, but if, if you're gonna scalp the lawn, use the current blade that's on the mower now to do that, and then switch to a fresh blade to cut the lawn for the, you know, you know, to, to cut the grass with. So that's what I would do. I'd use the, old, use the current blade, beat it up, doesn't really matter because the grass is gonna be, you know, if you're scalping, you're gonna be taking all that out anyway. Doesn't really matter if the blade is super sharp. And then for when you're really trying to maintain the lawn and keep it nice, put a fresh blade on it and, and see how that, that works out for you. Great question. And yes, you absolutely need to sharpen it and or replace it. That's probably the, the most, one of the most common things that um, people with rotary mowers do not do often enough. All right. Next up, Alex B's Charm says, says, uh, Edwin Chariot, same with me. Humachar is okay. I used one bag in 2020, but does not cover near the area amount they claim, in my opinion, and does not have nearly the impressive ingredients as Carbon Pro G or Essential G. So there you go. There's another person that uh, started out with Humachar and has moved over to that Miramichi Green Life on that Essential G train. It's good stuff, man. Good stuff. So hopefully that helps you. Hopefully that helps you. All right, uh, JD Holloway's in the house. Next, he has a question about seeding. He says, have you ever done dormant seeding? If so, how did it turn out? I have not. I have not. I've never, I've never put the seed down uh, this time of year when the lawn's dormant. I, you know, I don't know that, um, I don't know if there's really a ton of reason, in my opinion, a ton of reason to really do it, uh, especially, especially on home lawns, right? There's not really a reason, like, like, what are you really getting out of putting the seed down now versus waiting when conditions are ideal? Like, you have more of a chance of it drying out, uh, potentially birds eating it. Oh, that's kind of overblown with birds eating all the, all the grass seed, but you know, you just, you just have more chance of bad things to happen to the seed because right now you're not in, we're not in the, in the conditions where it's going to germinate and do well. So I, I, I personally don't see any upside to doing it. There, there might be some, but there's none that I can really think of, especially on a home lawn that would make seeding when it's dormant or this time of year, that would make that make um, a ton of sense. I can't really see any upside. So hopefully that helps, JD. Uh, good question. All right, next up, we get Daniels in the house. He says, uh, uh, thanks for the response. If I'm needing to put down a triple super phosphate this spring, is there a specific brand you would recommend? I don't have a brand that I'd recommend. Who was it up here that had a comment about an 1846? Someone did that. I think it was Kelby. Kelby has one here. Uh, Daniel, take a look here. What's on the on the screen now? Uh, I think it's a Dimonium uh, phosphate is what he was talking about, and that's an 1846 So maybe give that a shot. I, I have never had to do a major phosphorus amendment to my soil. So that's why I don't have a good recommendation for you uh, as far as that goes. And, and hopefully you're doing that um, based on soil test results. You know what I mean? So don't just be throwing a bunch of phosphate on the lawn, a lot of phosphorus on the lawn, unless you absolutely need it. But um, what Kelby is talking about there, that, that 1846 um, uh, that's, that's a that could be a good option for you 
uh, to try out. Again, with that one, I would wait until the grass is actively growing. I would not do it uh, this time of the year. I would wait another six weeks minimum, six, eight weeks before, before putting that down. Great, great question. All right, next up we have Mr. Gary Kellett Jr. in the house. He says, Ron, I just decided to throw down some yard mastery, which my starter, which is my starter and flagship fertilizer that just got delivered today. Still waiting for my Caravan G from Site 1 to show up, which it was just five weeks out. Wow, dude, it's five weeks out to get Caravan G? Mm, see? So again, I'm not overblowing this. Like you look at him, he's trying to get, I mean, you figure. Site 1 is some, is a, they, they can get, I would imagine as far as anyone having a good connection on being able to get lawn care products, you'd think Site 1 would, right? So if even for them, it's five weeks out to get, uh, you know, a product that was largely, it was everywhere last year. Carbon Pro G was easy, was, sorry, Caravan G was, was really easy to find everywhere. That tells you something. That tells you where things we could be looking at uh, as far as the lawn care game uh, this year. So stock up early. But yeah, man, I'm glad that you got your, your, your products. I guess, Gary, you're probably in South Florida somewhere or where it's hot and where your grass is actively growing since you're putting down, uh, you know, the Yard Mastery flagship and or starter fertilizer. Um, you definitely wouldn't want to be doing that this time of year in Georgia, but uh, but yeah, I'm glad you got your stuff and that you are got to throw it down. I'm sure that makes Alan happy. Okay, uh, and then Daniel, Lance F is, uh, we have one for the Humichar camp. Uh, Lance says, Humichar is great. I use it all last season. You can't go wrong with it. So there you go. You got someone in the Humichar camp. Uh, but again, I, I personally am a fan of Essential Gene. I am, and others too. And uh, yeah, and Windchair is kind of is saying the same thing I'm saying as far as uh, mower blades. This is at Kelby Ruiz, I have a three-year-old Honda. I change blades every year. Uh, they're pretty cheap. So there you go. So if, even if you don't want to go through the trouble of you know pulling the mower blade off, balance, make sure uh, sharpening it, make sure it's balanced when you're done sharpening it and putting it back on, then you know you know Wind Chariots uh, gives you an option for just saving a step. Just take the old one off, throw a fresh one on, and you're good to go. You're good to go. But sharp equipment is super, super important. Super important when it comes to uh, getting the best result out of your lawn. Like I always say, mowing is literally the most important aspect of having a golf course lawn, regular mowing. And really, I need to amend that to say mowing with the proper equipment that is well-maintained. So you want to use sharp equipment, like well, well-maintained equipment to cut your to cut your grass. All right. Uh, let me see. I got to go to CE user um, next. This gets a good question, Robbie. Uh, I'm going to get to your next. He says here, I have 26,000 square feet of warm season grass that has not been limed in at least 20 years. I need 100 pounds per thousand or so. That's a lot. I wouldn't do, I wouldn't do all that at once. Uh, can I apply lime during the growing season or should it only be in the winter and fall? You can apply during the growing season. I actually did that. Actually, where's my wind? Where's my video? I've got a video where I can actually show you guys the results of that. So yeah, I actually, I did it in... Um, in June, I believe, between June and July, uh, CE user. You're, the big thing is you're gonna wanna water it in heavily. Make sure you water it in. I would not do 100 pounds at once. That's way too much. Like the most I would go with in a single application is like 40 pounds per thousand. So you're probably looking at, uh, if you wanted to, assuming you're, where are you? I don't need to say where you are in the country. Assuming you're like, say, in Georgia, if you wanted to put down some now and then some, you know, three or four months from now, like breaking it up in a couple of applications, that would be good if you want to do it in thirds where you do like, you know, 40 pounds now, 40 pounds in the summer and maybe 20 pounds in the fall or 40 now, 20 in the summer and uh, another 40 in the fall. You want to break it up like that. That makes sense. I would not do a hundred pounds all at one time. That's, that's, that's too much. You're not going to have, you're going to, it's it, 40 is, is about the limit is what I would say go with on a, um, on a residential lawn. And I've got my, Oh, I've got a video here on applying lime, and I actually did it uh, in, like I said, the beginning of June uh, last year. And if you guys really want to get bored and have me want to geek out a little bit, I can actually show you guys the results of how the pH changed from June to my from their June soil test to my fall soil test from doing that that application. So you absolutely can do it. There are no negative results whatsoever, and um, and it can work well. Yes, yeah, so you absolutely can. I just wouldn't do a hundred pounds all at once. That's too much. All right, so let me put the link in the chat here for you, CE. Let me see here, at CE user. And uh, this is the lime video. Check that video out. You can see, I talk about like types of lime, application rates. You can see me running on the lawn, all that fun stuff. 
And uh, there you go. Hopefully, hopefully that that helps. You're gonna be need, you're gonna need a lot of lime. <laughs> so yeah, I would break it up. And then Robbie's in the house. He's messing with me a little bit. He says, "What kind of what sort of discount can I expect for post to Northern Ireland?" <laughs> I, it, you know, the problem is I can't ship it overseas. Not yet anyway. It's something I want to change um, eventually, but here's the problem. The shipping would absolutely just make it not even worth it. Can you imagine? Like, I mean, what a bag of Essential G is what, 59? And that's shipped anywhere in the continental United States? Like with shipping it to Ireland, it's going to, I mean, I guess conservatively probably double, double that. And let's say something happens where it gets damaged and I got to send you another one. It's just, it's, it's going to be, it's just not a, not an easy, um, Logistically, it's hard to do. It would be easier if Miramichi Green had like a like a plant or facility in the UK where you could ship from there. But to ship it from the US over there, it's just not. I mean, it's just it, it's cost prohibitive to um to do it to pull something like that off. All right, next up we have Siraj Malhotra in the house. Just, uh, ha Happy New Year, Ron. Uh, been a while. It has been, sir. Hopefully you're doing well. Thanks for coming to hang out in the chat. And Robert Mahora, what's going on, Robert? No air, ah, I guess it is an airplane. What are you? Oh yeah, it's a, it's a jet. Looks like a uh, 747. Climbing out, looks like. Yeah, it's a 747. It says, good evening, uh, Ron and you all. Hopefully you're doing well. Thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream, sir. And um, let's see, we got out Daniel saying he appreciates Alex's opinion. And he's, oh, well, I guess it's a kind of a sidebar. He says, would you say human char is a better source of carbon? So it has higher biochars and more beneficial to the lawn or just put down high grade compost. I'm sure Alex will chime in. Alex will chime in. All right, uh, and then uh, Dwin Chariot is uh, talking about chicken feed as a good source of carbon. It's inexpensive, I like it. I like that as well, not bad. But then you don't have the convenience of getting it just dropped to your door. That's the thing, man, the convenience. You can't, you can't discount convenience, uh, Wind Chariot. Can't discount convenience. All right, so I'm looking for my next comment here. Uh, you guys are going back and forth on carbon and compost and whatnot. I really like the discussion. It's great stuff. And Alex B is a Patriots fan. Oh, Patriots, that's what they played. So am I that far behind? So they played, but they, 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 they played the Patriots? The Patriots were eliminated? I don't think so. I thought they were playing someone else. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay, well, if you're a Patriots fan um, and they're still in the playoffs, I don't know if they are. I, haven't, I didn't watch any of the Patriots game. Good luck. Although, being from Atlanta, we must hate the Patriots. Actually, we must hate Tom Brady, not really the Patriots, but but yeah. All right, next up, we have a question from Robert Mahorez on fertilizer pricing. He says, what's the thoughts on fertilizer pricing? Just, just price granular 0.43 per diamine at site one. It's doubled from last fall. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be a thing. And here's, here's the thing, Robert. If you wait, it might go up even more. It might go up even more because, uh, you know, not to be like Mr. Fairmonger or anything, but supply chain is going to be an issue. Like the cost of getting the cost, one thing, a couple things. One, supply chain is thing one. But then also inflation, right? Like the cost of everything is going up. You know, kind of happens when you, when you infuse a ton of money into the economy. So the price of everything is going up. So if you want to like get it at a cheaper, at a, at a more palatable price, I would stock up now. I mean, I don't know what um, Site1 is offering Prodiamine at, but at the golf course lawn store, we've got it. Granted, it's not 0.43 percentage. We got it at the 0.38, and it's 55 a bag shipped. So I don't know how that compares to what um, you know site one is offering. But the price of everything is going to go up here. Uh, you know, index over the course of the season. I have no reason to believe that 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 things are going to cost what they cost last year. Just if for no reason other than inflation, that is just going to cost more. So that's why I would tell you guys to stock up now. Like even with Humic Max, even like even if you if you guys liked Humic Max, which most everyone that's tried it loved it, like this price, I don't know whenever we get the next shipment in or when we when we reach out to restock if we're going to be able to offer it at this price. Probably won't be able to. So if you or if you've used this Humic Max in the past and you've had great results with it or you're thinking about trying it, like get it now because come March Time frame. I don't know what it's going to cost. I haven't gotten any of those any of those numbers or anything as yet to know what it's going to it's going to have to sell it for. So hopefully that helps. Hopefully that helps with saving you guys some uh, some coin. If you want to save some money on at least any Miramichi Green products, join the Golf Course Lot Academy. You know, all members get a ten percent discount in the store, so that's a way to save some coin too. All right, all righty. Um, so you guys are going back and forth about Essential G and Humichar and lawn renovations. 
like uh, like Daniel saying, you know, at Winchair and Alex B, appreciate that, guys. Looking for looking to renovate uh, Bermuda Lawn this year with R and fifteen seeds. So just trying to figure out the best soil conditioner to prep for the seed. Yeah, I mean, it makes it makes a lot of sense. Putting something down is is a good idea. Uh, something you want to try too, and I didn't see you mention it, um, Daniel, is um, like a like a, something like Bloomplex. I use this as part of. Um, I use this when I did my seeding project. This is something we carry in the golf course lawn store. This actually stuff actually worked really, really well. I wouldn't use this all the time as your uh, as your liquid fertilizer unless you, your soil calls or needs needs a phosphorus. But as far as something to help boost your seed, uh, your the the benefit of your, your seeding project, boost your seed. <laughs> uh, Bloomplex is a great option. This is what I actually used. Um, you know, the week after putting the seed down uh, last year when I did my top dressing and overseeding, overseeding work. And that's also available at the golf course lawn store. So something else to consider as well as essential G for your, um, for your soil prep. Don't also neglect, don't neglect also the, you know, the, the starter for that you want, you might want to use in the lawn as well. Great, great stuff. Another option is the triple 12 on the site as well, uh, as, uh, as well too. Right. And, um, yeah, and when Jared is is chiming and he agrees with me, he says, "Yeah, get us get a broad starter for and do a soil test prior to see what you're starting with." Yeah, so to to Win Chariot's point, uh, soil testing is like getting a soil test done. Again, one I recommend it's one from my soil, uh, really easy to use, super 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 accurate results, and you get them back fast. Uh, again, be careful with the golf course lawn store. Like getting that was going to tell you exactly what the soil needs uh, to get it in in great shape to get the best possible results. So. Uh, he is giving you great advice. As far as a starter shirt fertilizer, we also carry the triple 12 in the golf course lawn store as well. So if that's what you decide to go with, you can uh, can do that as well. All right, well, we got a visitor from, from Australia from Down Under. What's going on? It says, good day, mate, from Down Under, Mr. B. Good day. Uh, I guess it's, let me think. So it's winter here still. So it's probably the middle of summer for you guys in Australia. So uh, yeah, thanks for coming to hang out, uh, Mr. B. That's pretty cool from a uh, visitor from from uh, down under watching the live stream. Very, very, very cool stuff as always. And it uh, looks like, yeah, Daniel says he's already got it. You already got the triple 12 today. So cool. So you're good to go. You're good to go. All right. Uh, the next question uh, we have here is, um, let's see, let's look at Daniel's other question. He says, I have a soil test from fall of 2020 and have it applied anything to the soil in between now and then? Should I just take a new one or should the old results apply just fine? They're probably, they're gonna be close. Uh, they, if you've not done anything since uh, fall of 20, fall 2021 or fall 2020, are you saying a year and like a, like over, I don't know, a year and five, almost 18 months ago and now, or are you saying, are we talking like three months ago or 18 or almost 18 months ago? Uh, either way, if you've not done anything, the soil, I mean, here's the thing, the soil, the soil would have changed, like your, your, your NPK levels, especially your nitrogen and uh, potassium levels would likely have changed um, from 2020 to now. If it's from the fall to now, not as much, not as much. So, I mean, soil tests are relatively inexpensive. Here's the thing, Daniel, here's where I look at it, right? One of these soil tests, soil test kit's going to cost you like 30 bucks, right? If you get, if you don't, if you get the probe, it's going to cost you a little bit more. It's so all in for less than $50, you are literally taking all the guesswork out of it. And if you factor in what the seed is going to cost you, right? What the water is going to cost you, what your time is worth. Uh, it's just, it's it's a small price. As, as you look at the, the overall cost of everything involved, like the $50 or so that you might spend on a soil test, 30 bucks if you already have one of these, um, is small in comparison to the results or, or, or just having the right data to be able to, to know that, this, you've, you've up, you're giving the ground or giving the soil exactly what it needs so you so that you can get the best possible result. So for me, it's a, it's a great investment, especially for someone like you that is is about to undertake a big project of of seeding the entire lawn. You know, so just something to consider. If you've not done one, get another one done. It's not going to hurt. Again, they're not that expensive, and and then you'll know you'll you won't we won't be guessing. You'll know exactly what you need to do between now and then uh, to to get the soil in a good good spot. So. Hopefully that helps. All right, next up is Adrian Frazier. He says, will this unusual snow and ice in South Carolina delay my spring green up? Uh, not really. I mean, it's gonna, here's the thing, uh, Adrian, had it stayed, had it not snowed between now and March, 
would it have, um, would, well, I sh so yeah, it kind of, kind of would. I'm, I'm contradicting myself. Um, would the lawn have greened up a little bit sooner? Yes. So in my case, my lawn was starting to green up a little bit, but again, December is way too early for it to be turning green anyway. So it was, it was an anomaly. It shouldn't have been happening in the first place, and I just got too happy, and I know better. But the, the, to answer your question, if you got, let's say we got this, like a snow and ice in March, then yes, that would delay your lawn greening up. But now it's not so much, we're so far out, we're like we're two months out really, eight weeks out, eight to nine weeks out from when the lawn really should begin greening up, that it's not gonna make a difference. So, so no, you're, you're gonna be just fine. I mean, barring us getting freezing temperatures in March, you're gonna be good to go. It's not gonna make a, not gonna make a difference. So hopefully that helps. Good, good question. It's a good question. All right, so Alex is talking about Humic Max. He says, uh, good choice. I use Humic Max for most of the growing season, but I got the Yardmaster Triple 12 from Ron Store, same product you got, and had great results using it for my recent autumn seeding renovation. So there you go. So yeah, if you're looking for a, a, a generic, a broad spectrum starter furt, then the Triple 12 that we carry is a great option. And that's it with the Triple 12 too, guys. Unlike uh, a lot of the other options, like ones you might go find at Home Depot or even at Site One, the Yardmaster Triple 12, the one that we carry in the Golf Course Lawn Store, also contains a complete micronutrient stack. So you've got some iron in it, uh, magnesium, zinc, um, uh, you've got uh, copper, a bit of boron. It's got, it's got, it's got everything. And you normally don't find that in a granular fertilizer and definitely not in a starter granular fertilizer. So if you're looking for one, the uh, the triple 12 is a great is a great option. Great, great option. All right, uh, so next up we have uh, David W in the house. It says, I live in central Oklahoma and my soil is super dry to the point that it to the point that it pulls back, from my foundation, so super dry. Okay, so yeah, so super like parched, parched, like scorched earth dry. <laughs> he says, will aeration fix that? Uh, any other options? Should I backfill the open spots by my foundation? Yeah, so aeration is going to break up compaction. It's gonna allow more moisture to get down into the soil. Uh, and yeah, if you can, if you're gonna aerate it, um, if you're gonna aerate the, the that that part of the lawn and also introduce some, you know, a, a good topsoil mix as well, uh, to to fill in I, again, I don't have any pictures. I, I'm assuming if it say, say it's pull back, I don't know, eight inches, six to eight inches, and that be that would be a lot. But if it if it came back that much, um, you know, putting putting some soil in to fill in those areas is a good idea. I, I, it's, it was crazy is that you're really that dry. I mean, I, I've um, I mean, we have some some dry soil here in in Georgia, but as far and I've seen it get so dry that it caught that it cracks and does some really nasty things. But pulling back from the foundation again. I don't know how much, you didn't say how far it's pulling back, but I'm imagining if it's that big a deal that you're considering filling it in that it's substantial. Uh, yeah, I would correct it, um, you know, put put soil, some soil in there to, to, to fill in the area. Aerate, consider also um, using a moisture manager as well. I don't know if any grass is growing in that area. From what you're describing, I kind of doubt it, but um, but if grass will grow there, using a moisture manager like Hydrotain is something else you can also do to help retain a bit of moisture uh, in the area. It would be just, it would be nice to know like what's causing, what's causing that. Is it just that that area just doesn't get any rain? It gets no moisture and that's why it's so dry um, or what? Because it, it'd be interesting, because here's why I'm, I'm interested in knowing that, um, David, because if we go through all this trouble, you go through and you aerate and you go through and you put additional soil in and we, we don't really figure out why that's happening it's likely just to happen again. Or if it's something that's been, just something that's taken several years to get to that point, that might be the answer. But if you're saying that it's so dry that this is happening on a regular basis, we wanna figure out why why that is um, so we can make it make that not happen. Try and take corrective action, whether introduce some drainage, some, some, some way to get water in that area or something along those lines to where you're not always having uh, the lawn, the soil dry out that much. So hopefully that helps. The answer to your question is yes. I would aerate, not now, like once once we get into the season and you know fill that area, maybe do a light top dressing of that area just to to to, to fill in the areas that were where it pulled back a bit, and then we can we can keep an eye on it and see uh, how it does after that. Fun question. That's a good one. All right, Brick Rehab's in the house. What's going on, Brick Rehab? He says, uh, "Hi, peeps, listening and driving home." That's right. You're always on the 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 freeway, right? So uh, I'm glad that you're listening, sir. Appreciate the uh, the support. Appreciate the support. And then Jim Carson is saying, David W, sounds like you have expansive soil. 
All right, and then David says, "I'm new. I don't know. Am I? I'm suppose I'm new. I'm in Oklahoma. I'm still learning. So we shall. Uh, we'll we'll see. It, yeah, keep. Yeah, keep, somehow keep introducing moisture. Will salt will help with this. So, you know, if you want to aerate and then in, put, you know, fill in the, the 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 dry areas, and then keep figure out some way to keep some moisture on it because you just can't just we just can't have it drying out that much. So I'm not sure what it's going to take to do that. Um, but we ha introducing water will help will help this problem." Okay, uh, and then Jim Carson is, yeah, Jim also agrees with me. He says, yeah, David, try keeping the dirt wet and see if that clo if it closes up. So yeah, moisture moisture covers a lot a multitude of sins uh, when it comes to lawn care. So there you go. Uh, Fairway Bermuda Lawn is talking about the Sun Joe. He's chiming in. He says, hey, yeah, the Sun Joe works great. I purchased one and used it last year. I'm going to make content on it in late spring. So there you go. Look out for the Fairway Bermuda's channel. If you've not subscribed to him yet, go give him a, a sub so that whenever he does make the content on it, you will be able to see it. So there you go, the pressure's on now. The pressure's on, Fairway. You gotta, you gotta deliver now. You gotta deliver on that Sun Joe content. It's gotta, it's gotta happen. It gotta happen. And then, uh, and Dan uh, Winchard is, is back. He's talking about adding phosphorus uh, whenever doing seeding, which is something I did as well too. He says, yeah, at Daniel, I added a higher phosphorus starter for it because of my soil test. Uh, my P, my phosphorus needed a boost. So in Winchair's case, his phosphorus was a bit low, which is why he added a higher P uh, fertilizer. I didn't really need phosphorus, but this, as you can tell, if you look at the ingredients in it, this is 16% in the Bloomplex. So this is an option if you want something in a liquid that's easy to apply. Uh, that's why I ended up going, that's what I ended up going with for my lawn. So for my seeding project last year. Okay, and then uh, uh, Lois is in the house. What's going on, Lois? Hopefully you're doing well. She says, happy Friday. I just hit the like button. I picked up my still edger. All right, some hardware. Okay, we got, we got to clap it up for that. <laughs> got to clap it up. New hardware. He says, I didn't get any attachments because I didn't need them. Okay, so you just got just the edger. Cool, very cool. You got to let us know how it does. Because now, you were, you were debating between the electric and the gas-powered, I thought, right? So which one did you end up going with? Did you end up going with the electric? or the gas powered um, edger. So let, if you're still here, uh, let us know down in the um, in the comments. Okay, and then Scott, uh, Scott Lang is chiming in as far as like uh, splitting up your pre-emergence. So Scott has a question around uh, choosing or, or, or varying pre-emergence for different times of year. He says, I did a split application of Stonewall in mid-November and plan to do the other half in the next couple of weeks. Would it be okay to use Dimension in late March? Yes, yeah. It, it would be. I mean, with Stonewall, what, what does the label say as far as um, the efficacy period on it? You know, like how long is it supposed to last for? So if you're going to do it now, uh, so we're in January, and, you know, if you're going to do Dimension in late March, yeah, I mean, if you're, if you're going to be putting down Stonewall now, I might wait. I might push it a little bit later because Dimension, uh, as you probably already know, Scott, it has a little bit of reach back or on, on baby crabgrass, so young crabgrass. So if you can wait till, you know, instead of March, if we can go like April for the dimension, because the stone wall should still be working, especially if you do it in the next couple of weeks and you're, you know, it's not gonna, it's not gonna lose its effectiveness in the in the course of like a month. So I wouldn't do like stone wall early February and then go do another pre-emergent um, in March. I would, I would space it out a bit. Um, and especially with the being, dimensions being the one that you mentioned, I would give it a little bit of time. I would go into April with that because you've already gonna, you're already going to have coverage and you're also going to be able to take advantage of its ability to kill uh, baby crabgrass, assuming you have any at all because you're essentially doing an, uh, an app that if you waited a couple of weeks might even, might even work for you as far as your, uh, your spring pre-emergent app. So just something to consider, something to keep in mind. All right. Um, and then uh, Chief says, "Go for it, uh, Ron. Appreciate it. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean, but okay." And then Mazama Blue has a he's, okay. Mazama Blue is saying, so he's chiming in. We're all talking about mowers, the Toro, the Alex, the uh, the JD. He's like, "Hey man, look, I got my Scott's manual reel, and I'm loving it." And here's the thing: don't don't hate on the Scott's manual. That's what I started out with. Those are my training wheels. That's that's what I I, I got some good results with the Scott's. Uh, manual real mower. Now, now when I talk about it, it sounds like a cra like I was crazy to at the time when the lawn was like twelve thousand square feet, like push mowing or push mowing a uh, a twelve thousand square feet with a manual real mower. Uh, a twenty inch manual real mower is not the brightest idea, but um, hey, I earned my stripes, man. You know, literally, I got my stripes literally doing that. So don't hate on the Scots. Good piece of kit. 
It's a great way to get your feet wet into, into real mowing for the people that are on the fence about it. All right, Jeremy White says, uh, Francis or uh, Francis uh, Nagane or, um, uh, uh, I can't pronounce his last name, or Cyril in UFC 240 tomorrow. Who you got? I think it's going to, okay, personally, I've watched uh, both of their fights in the past and they've both been, in my opinion, kind of boring. So, I don't know, it's probably going to be a snooze fest, to be completely honest. Uh, we'll say Gagne. We'll, 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 we'll go with we'll go with um, we'll go with Cyril, but it's, it's probably going to be probably going to be a boring fight. In the past, I don't even know if I'm going to get it because in the in the past I've been disappointed. Like I paid, got it, and I was like, man, this is really really was not was not a good card. So uh, I think it's going to be kind of dry personally. But now watch, I won't get it tomorrow, and then it's going to be like, oh, the greatest fight. They're brawling for all five rounds, you know. So we'll see. Haven't decided yet. Next up is Rolex, uh, uh, DSSD is saying, yo, 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 what's going on, Rolex? Hopefully you're doing all right. And then Jim has a question, a problem with dandelions in his lawns. He says, hey, I have tall fescue now and my, uh, and my grass is in, okay? And I have to, and I, and I have fall receded. Okay, so in the, in the fall, you receded your tall fescue lawn. I got it. He says, I have dandelions. What should I do with the dandelions? Ignore them or treat them? I don't know. It depends on how much they uh, they bug you. If it if it irritates you that much, uh, you can spray a selective herbicide. I don't know if Tenacity will target dandelions. It probably does. Can I find out really quick? Let's see. I'm not sure if Tenacity will uh, will target dandelions, but uh, but if if you can if you can wait, Jim, like uh, you know when things warm up a bit to where everything is growing a bit more actively, you're gonna get better results out of it. Yeah, so it does target dandelions. It's right here on the label. So yeah, so it is it is labeled to target uh, dandelions. So it, it depends on how much it's bugging you. I'm not sure where in the country you are. I'm imagining somewhere up north because it's yet tall fescue, but um, it's, it really depends on how much it bugs you. If it's irritating you a ton, you want to, you want to try and get rid of it, go for it. I, I don't know how well tenacity would work this time of year. I would personally wait until uh, a little bit late, a little bit closer to springtime when things are warming up, warming up to uh, to target to treat them. That's that is what I would do. So, unless you're going to tell me you have a tall fescue lawn and you're in Florida, in which case you can you know go with tenacity now. So, hopefully that helps. Uh, definitely make sure you read the label uh, for when you when you're applying that. Uh, there's a couple of good videos on it. I think Princess Cut Lawn Care actually I know Princess Cut Lawn Care has a really good video on tenacity, like mixing it with Speed Zone. For as a as a as a concoction that has very broad coverage for cool season grass, so check out his video if you're looking for some content on um, or some tips on how to to use that particular herbicide. Okay, Eric B is here with a question. He says, "I said since we're getting so much cold, since we're getting so much rain this cold, I see moss on the grass." Does baking soda fix this, or need to get rid of the moss with an iron product? I for, I forget its name. Um, and then the follow-up question is, do I need to, do I need to use the moss or baking soda uh, until spring comes? Uh, so Eric, here's the question I would have. Is this a temporary thing? In other words, in, in years past, has moss been an issue this time of year? Or is this something that you just, you're having this time because of like a lot more rain than usual? If it's because you're just having a lot more rain than usual, and it's a temporary thing. I might not just do anything about it, to be completely honest. Like, you know, it, whenever in you know, four to six weeks from now, when temps start warming up a bit, it's it's more than likely going to go away. Again, if we're talking about an area that normally does not have issues with moss, and it's just like you get, you're seeing a little bit in a few areas due to heavy rain, I wouldn't be so quick to run out there and, and put something down to take care of it. If it's if it's a if it's something if you know where it came from, and it's not a constant problem, then I would just, just let it go. I really, I don't know that I would be in a hurry to get out there and put a uh, baking soda or iron or anything, anything down on it to, uh, to try and get rid of it, uh, this time of year, because more than likely temperature is going to take care of it in another six weeks or so. Just something to stick to consider. All right. Next up, we have a, um, a comment from Lance F saying, Ron, I cannot wait for the summer. Uh, going to going to slay the neighborhood. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like the confidence. This is the whole county. <laughs> don't forget the neighborhood. The whole county. He says whole county is what this man's going after. He says your spoon feeding method is spot on. Looking to retain the belt. Want to keep that? Going to keep the belt on, right? All right, man. I, I hear you. I like it. I like confidence is high. You know, definitely get your products. Make sure you're all stocked up and good to go. And just here's the thing, Lance. If 
what you did last year worked. If you got great results with it, just stick with it. You know, if you want to make small adjustments or try small things here and there, fine. But I mean, if you have a process that works and is producing those results, no reason not to do it. You know, you want to retain the belt. You want to, you want to, in your case, you know, you're, you're, you're stepping it up. You know, just, just the neighborhood, just your street isn't enough. You want the entire county. So you, know, you want to make sure your game's on point. You don't want to go out and introduce anything too crazy and, uh, and mess up your results. So I like it. I like it. I like, I like the thing. And, and you know, that's a common thing I find. So most people, that are that are really into their lawns, right? Most people that are really into into home lawn care, not everyone, but most are are fairly competitive in nature. So either they like play paid sports in the past, or they just or they you know, or just in general, they just like to win. That is, and even if it means winning at their lawn, or my their lawn is the best looking lawn in the neighborhood, or the best looking lawn on the street, you're just a competitive bunch, which is which is really it's interesting. It's an interesting character trait that I see uh, both in the live stream and also people that email me. I, you won't be surprised at emails that I get from people that say, hey, Ron, I, said, I want to know, you know, let me know what I need to do to dominate like this year. Like, give me the give me the entire process. I'm like, well, you really should just go get the course. The course has it all laid out. Literally, like if, if you have like a couple of hours to watch videos and implement what's in them, like literally lays it all out for you. Uh, but then at, at any rate, I still type it out and I tell them, hey, you know, get a soil test done. Do your fertilization. Make sure you're going to commit to mowing because mowing is literally the most important part. And here's the thing, guys. Pro tip. Pro tip, even if your neighbors are using the same products that you're using, so like they're going through your trash or they're seeing like, you know, what you're putting out, looking at your bags to see what you're using. If they're not mowing as much as you, they're not going to dominate like you. That's that's the thing. See, at the end of the day, it comes down to effort. It comes down to consistent effort to have an amazing lawn. So if you're out there putting the putting the work in, being out there mowing, again, at least twice a week, and your neighbors aren't doing that, they don't really have a chance of uh, of really competing with you, so uh, so there you go. But yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing your results, man. Keep it going. Let's see, if we got a super a super chat here. Let me run down here and grab that really quick from Scott. I appreciate it, Scott. Thank you so much, sir. Super chat. He says, uh, "Thanks, Ron. I appreciate the information. You're very very welcome, sir. Thank you for coming in the live stream and asking questions. Makes it fun. I'd be here on a Friday night just talking to myself if you guys didn't show up, right? And that would be kind of weird. So I appreciate you guys coming to hang out and just have some fun." Uh, some fun turf talk as we complain about winter weather and pray for spring to arrive sooner than later, right? And on that, on that note, it's at the top of the hour. While I uh, take a sip of my lemonade and uh, look for the next question, I'm going to give you guys a chance to touch that like button ever so gently. And while I sip my lemonade. Great stuff. All right, and we're back. Uh, okay, so we have a qu next question we have is from Daniel F. He says, hey, Ron, is there a reason you suggest the Andersons 182412 uh, over the Yardmaster 212 starter for? Yes, the, only, the reason why, if you see me having a recommendation, I think in the course I might have a, a section on that because I have I talk about different fertilizers that you can use uh, depending on what you're trying to accomplish in the soil. In a situation where you you need you have your uh, phosphorus deficient, right? So you need to add more phosphorus to the soil, um, and you still want to use something that's balanced to an extent, right? So it has like all has um, all three ingredients: you get your nitrogen, your phosphorus, and your potassium. But you want you want the phosphorus to be the dominant uh, uh, macro. That's where the Andersons comes in, where that one the the eighteen twenty four twelve makes a lot of sense because yes, you can use the yard mastery triple twelve, but that's really for soil that is already in, or, or where you're not really trying to, to jockey um, uh, levels, in this case, of, of phosphorus. Does that make sense? So the, the triple 12, nothing wrong with that. You can use that. It, it will raise your phosphorus levels. But if you're really trying to boost the phosphorus levels um, over the nitrogen and potassium, that's where the 18, 24, 12 uh, makes sense. So that's, that's the whole reasoning for it. For your Arden 15 spring project, uh, that's a great option. So if you look at this, right? Like I use the Bloomplex, Daniel, right? I use an 18165. What is what's different? What's the the the, the common theme here, right? So the Andersons is 182412. The 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 highest number is the phosphorus. In this case, mine I'm using an 8165. The highest number is the phosphorus, you know, to help um, with that with the seeding with root development. So yeah, that's that's the reasoning behind that. So either one can work. Triple 12 will work. The Andersons can also work as well too. The, the 182412 is a better choice if you also need um uh you it's also is also if you also need the uh to raise your phosphorus levels as well. 
And actually, I just got a question here about the golf course lawn store. It's, it's funny. I'm, I'm talking about the store the entire time. I don't have a link to it in here. So golf course lawn store. I just got that from Jim. This is Ron. We need a link to your store. <laughs> You do. You think I'm, I'm 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 trying to get you guys to to buy products and take take advantage of all the cool discounts that I, I uh, put together for the course. And the one thing I didn't put is a link to the store in here, right? So interesting. Golf Force Lawn Store, and there you go. There you go. There there's your link. And actually, I will pin the message. I think we can do that. So you guys should see it um, pop up to where um, that's where you can go get. All the, a lot of the products that I'm talking about, and you can also get the discount on the Golf Course Lawn Academy. So there you go. It's a pinned comment now. You guys have got a link to it. You can go there and, and pick that up. Because again, I want you guys to sign up for the course, but I also want you guys to save money. So get it, save $45 on it by buying something in the store and getting the course, and then you can recoup your cost with the discount coupon that you guys, that all the members get. Um, the discount code is GCLA member, which again, don't try and use it if you're not a member because it's not going to work. <laughs> Like I thought about that, <laughs> so um, but yeah, in the lot in the course content, like I think it's the lesson two, the second one, second module, it, it tells you exactly how to take advantage of the discount, like how to use it, all this kind of stuff. But yeah, it's like literally ten percent off of all Miramichi Green products in the store, and uh, there you go. The link is now up on the screen, Jim. I appreciate you. Thanks for the question. Something I should have been doing all along, so I'll do that going forward. Good, uh, good ask. All right, Daniel says, triple uh, 12 because I can use it for plants, shrubs, and I just wanted to know why you suggested the 1824-12 for a starter for it. Well, well yep, that's a good, that's a good, uh, it's fair enough. You can use the, the 1824 as well. I mean, it's, it's really if the soil that you're trying to treat needs phosphorus, right? So even if you're doing other, you know, if, you're, if you, you have like a flower bed and you do a soil test in the flower bed and it's phosphorus deficient, you can still use that. You could use the 1824-12 in that case too. So... It's it's really for for cases where you're where you're trying to boost phosphorus levels. So hopefully that helps. And uh, there we go. All right. Uh, Lois has a question. She says, "Ron, is anyone else having a difficult time getting their lawnmower serviced?" Don't know. I haven't taken mine in as yet. I, I reached out to Joey, and this when he told me, "Hey, I'm not working at Jerry Pate anymore." So Bruce, I got I got to talk to Bruce. I don't I don't think this time of year shouldn't be too bad for uh, for Greens Masters, but. Let me finish reading your question. He says, I have a Toro and a Troy built rotary, a repair shop to sh change my blades with a three week turnaround. Um, I'm not sure which repair shop you're using, uh, Lois. I'm not sure if you're, I'm not sure what area you're in. If you're in the Atlanta area, if you're in the Atlanta area, give Jerry Pate company a call. They should be able to do better than three weeks, especially this time of year. I don't know where you are though. So if you, depending on where you are in the country, if they, you know, if they're just, if it's a smaller shop or they're, or they're just getting a lot of equipment in at the time, it's not a, you know, it could be, it could be three weeks. I mean, that's, that sounds a bit long to me, but, um, but it's, it's possible just depending on what their load is. But I mean, you, you are doing the right thing by getting it done earlier, getting it done now versus like, imagine if you waited till March to do it and you, you know, you got like three weeks without your equipment, that would be bad. Like if the time to be without your, your mower is now, you know what I mean? Not, not, um, you know, Two months from now, when you're in the, when the growing season is kicking off, and you need to be out there mowing your lawn. Very cool. All right, Demir's in the house. What's going on, sir? What's going on? He says, "What's going on, Ron? Late to the show tonight, but one more day closer to spring. Isn't that the truth, sir?" And I, I sent you a message on Instagram. We got to get up. We got to link up. I got to figure out what your schedule is like to get you back on the show. Um, I know you're a busy guy, so I, I just gotta we gotta gotta put our schedules together and figure out when you can get out here and drop some golf course and turf knowledge on us and answer all the tough questions and stuff. And and to be completely honest, you take some of the pressure off of me, I can sit back and sip my lemonade and just let you take it away for a lot of the evening, right? So I need, I need like a like an off night or, a, or like a, a less less work night and you, you can help facilitate that. Plus they re everyone really likes you, so there's that. So we gotta make that happen, gotta make that happen. And Lois says, I learned how to change the air filter and oil. I'm not sure about changing blades. So here's the thing, uh, Lois. If you're if you're talking about doing a so a, a rotary mower, it's really not that hard to change lawnmower blades. Um, there's, I think Alan, man, can I find it really quickly? Alan's got a really good video. Like the lawn care has got a really good video on changing lawnmower blades. I think Bermuda Grass Central also has one on uh, on changing. Uh, lawnmower blades, uh, lawnmower blades. I'm just 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 go on on YouTube and check. 
but it's not that hard. Literally, it is, if, especially if you're not sharpening it yourself, all you're doing is um, removing the old blade and putting a new one on. It's just a single bolt, it's just one bolt. So there are a few things you wanna be aware of, like, um, like if you're going to be uh, changing a lawnmower blade, you wanna make sure the spark plug is disconnected so the mower cannot start. That's very important, like do not flip the mower over um, and try and remove the lawnmower blade with it still on. I mean, while, although kind of unlikely, if you, you know, if you flip the mower, if you turn the, um, the blade over and the ignition happens to be on, it, it is, it's remotely possible that it could start. So uh, most important tip is you wanna make sure the spark plug, the, the boot that goes on the spark plug is disconnected. And then there's a couple of tricks, like using a block of wood to isolate the blade so it can't really rotate and then breaking it loose, but literally it's one bolt. One bolt to back it off, one bolt to put it, to put the new blade up back on. If you've already, if you already know how to change the filters and the oil, the blade really isn't that bad. The blade really, in my opinion, the, the blade is, is, is probably easier. It's definitely less messy than changing, changing the oil. So uh, check out um, Bermuda Grass Central's YouTube channel. I think he has a, a video on lawn more blades, changing blades. I know Alan has one, the lawn care nut. I know, cause I know last season he did one on changing lawn more blades and talking about a lot of the tips that I'm, I'm sharing with you now. I don't have one because I don't have uh, any rotary mower, so I don't, but there's a few things I can just tell you for safety, safety aspect, make sure the, the spark plug is disconnected, like the boot is off the spark plug before you do it. So hopefully that helps. It sounds like you're on your way there. So maybe after this time, after this maintenance, you get the mower back, uh, you just do it all yourself, you know, if that's all you're doing. So great, great stuff. All right, uh, and uh, Kevin D says, phosphorus and lime must also be mined, so it is labor and lack of mining for materials and fertilizer, just like the same supply issues you see on the news. Stock up now. That's, it, it, that is the truth, man. I mean, I've spoken with the nice folks at, at Miramichi Green. They don't foresee a lot of, at this point, they don't see issues with supply chain as far as just being able to keep essential G in stock, um, and as far as being able to keep like the carbon kit, release zero, the biospectrum, all those types of things in stock. But who's to say, right? So getting them now is uh, getting it. Now. There's, the stuff doesn't go bad. Is what I'm trying to say. Is if you have a place to store it, get it now versus waiting when everyone decides they're going to start buying products for the lawn and then you can't get it. You know what I mean? I mean, at, at a in a best case scenario, like it's it's going to still be in stock and it might even cost more two to three months from now versus what it costs now. And there's no negative to buying it now, other than you have to have somewhere to keep it. So it's something to keep in mind. All right, yeah, and then Alex B saying, yeah, congrats on your engagement. Yeah, congrats again, man. I, mean, I know we've already said congrats like three times, but congrats. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. Very, very, very cool. And then uh, Kevin says, I am set for the season to the golf course lawn store specials. That's right. I think you were the winner, right? You got the uh, you got the Carmen kit. So if you guys don't know what he's talking about, Kevin, I believe, was the winner of this, of the golf course lawn carbon kit. We actually gave away the 10,000 square foot package. So we, he, got, he got the baller package, you know, the Cadillac, Cadillac edition, uh, which consists of three things, Nutri-Kelp, Release Zero, and Biospectrum. So everything you need to improve nutrient uptake, improve uh, microbial activity in the soil, and also that kelp that's in Nutri-Kelp, uh, it's 24%. Uh, that also helps, it's just a great, like, you think of almost like a vitamin booster for your soil and your grass. So it's an awesome, awesome product. Again, everyone that's used it has only had great things to say about it. I think that's what Kevin's referring to with the Christmas special because he actually won that uh, this past uh, this past uh, Christmas whenever we were doing a giveaway on the channel. So again, congrats again, Kevin. You are all set as far as the liquids, but what about Essential G? You got to get that, man. You got to be stocked up on that as well. And then uh, Demir says, at Daniel, I'm guessing he suggested 182412 because of the phosphorus is really essential for nutrient is really essential nutrient for establishment. And that's exactly it. So yeah, so the 182412 or the triple 12 can work. The 2412, because it just has more of what you need or what is more valuable to uh, to establishing a new lawn. So there you go. I'm way behind. Like I'm, I'm answering questions. I'm just going on and seeing that you guys have already answered them. So, so yeah. So yeah, Daniel, if it was 18 months, you don't have to, but if it were me, I would. I would, man, because, because it's so inexpensive. A sole test kit is so inexpensive in comparison to the amount of money you're about to spend on seed, on watering, on prep. It's just, it's a, like, why, there's like, why not? Why not just have all the answers to the test, right? That's the way, that's the way I look at it. So you don't necessarily have to, but it's, I think, I think it's a good idea. It is, it is what I would do if I were you. That's the best way I can answer the question. I answer questions in the way that what I would do based on the situation. And if it were me, 
If I were planning a major seating project, a uh, major lawn renovation that's going to involve seating the lawn, I would do a soil test a couple months prior. I would. I would, I would, I would. All right. Um, let's see. And then, uh, so Alex, this is, a good, this is a good one here. So Alex B is asking Demir a question. We're going to get his response. He says, hey, there's a question earlier. I was hoping you would show up to answer. Can you treat moss in a dormant lawn or is it best to wait until the grass is back active? And Demir says... Alex, I'd wait if you're treating it with chemicals so you just don't ding the turf. However, if you just use Dawn dish soap in four ounces, uh, so four ounces of Dawn to a gallon of water, that's the dilution rate, you can treat the moss. Dish soap is really effective on moss. So there you go. And that will not hurt the lawn, right? So good stuff. There's a pro tip. Pro tip for you. Pro tip. So a pro tip for treating moss in your lawn that will cost you pennies is to use four ounces of Dawn mixed with one gallon of water. Courtesy of Demir. Appreciate you. Good, uh, good tips. And then, yeah, and this, and then Alex B is saying, yeah, Demir, thanks. Another person in the chat was asking, and I was going to recommend soap and water mix, but not sure if it could be done during dormancy or not. And yes, absolutely. No, no problems at all with that. Thanks for that, Demir. It's a good, thanks. Appreciate you chiming in, as always. And then Lois says, so you got the gas one. You got the gas still. Okay, cool. Very nice. Very nice. Oh, good. A good question. A good question that is near and dear to my heart. The subject of plant growth regulator. Dustin Waterman is in. He says, risk versus reward on using PGR for the first time on my lawn this year. Bluegrass, rye, and probably some older fescue lawn. Risk, if you follow the application rates, practically none. There's no, really no risk. No, no, there's practically I wouldn't say there's not zero, but there's it's there's little chance that anything bad is going to happen. Kind of like putting down fertilizer or putting or using herbicide on your lawn. Like if you use it correctly at the correct rates, the risk is minimal, right? So it's um, very very minimal, and the reward is that it's awesome. Like like plant growth. I mean, ask the beer. Like he's in here. Like plant growth regulator is awesome stuff, especially if you are. You didn't say if you're like real mowing. Oh, uh, this is a fescue, so probably not. But if you but if you're especially for shortcut turf. Plant growth regulator is a godsend. It saves you. It saves you. It, it improves the call, the quality of the turf, the, the look of it, the density, um, and it just cuts down on mowing. It cuts down on mowing. Like it's great, great stuff. And it's it's really not that hard to use. So if I have, do I have one here? Actually, I can do it. I got to unplug here real quick. I'm gonna grab my container and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Music. All right. And I'm back plug back in here. So I'll, I'll show you how little you need. All right. So I'm back. So uh, Dustin, if you're using, depending on which PGR you're using, but if you're using Trinexapac Ethyl, which is like Tinex, or if you want just a small amount to try out, uh, Primo Max, you can actually get this now in these small quantities. Look at that. I mean, they, they Syngenta went out and they made this now available in four ounce quantities. So this will do... On most lawns, like enough for like four applications, on Bermuda anyway, four applications in a season. On cool season grass, probably not, because you need the rates are a bit higher. But this is a great way to get you to get your feet wet in PGR if you're looking to, you know, if you're looking to, to, to do that and not um, not end up with a gallon of the product. Um, but as far as application rates, let me show you, give you an example. So for Cool season turf is actually easier because if memory serves me, the rates for this on cool season turf are much are, are several orders higher than from for, for warm season. I want to say it's around half an ounce or so or so on cool season turf for uh, for plant growth regulator for Tinex or for uh, for Primo Max. On with Bermuda, it's a quarter of an ounce with a gallon of water over a thousand square feet. So to give you an example of what that's like, this is an, it's an ounce container, an ounce measuring cup. One ounce is that first mark right there. That first, that lowest mark, the one at the very bottom, that's one ounce. That one ounce, so one ounce of this product is enough for 4,000 square feet. So you take one ounce of this, mix it with four gallons of water, and that's enough for 4,000 square feet of coverage on a Bermuda grass lawn. For... Um, what you have for a rye a rylon, um, it's uh, the rates are going to be higher. I want to say it's close to half an ounce per thousand, so you'd be more like in like two ounces in comparison to what I'm doing. Um, but check the label. If you follow the label, 
uh, and again, you apply it at the correct rates. So again, you've got a, you've got a backpack sprayer <laughs> that is calibrated, meaning you know how much product you're putting down over a certain uh, over a given area. Uh, if you also a pro tip as well is if you can mix a little bit of a um, little bit of uh, iron in with it. So what I use, what I do in my in my blend is I use T nex or I use sorry I keep saying T nex. I've used it forever. I use this. I use um, T nex pack ethyl Supremo Max, and I mix it with an application of, uh, of Turfplex. I use it at a low rate. So I use uh, the PGR, a bit of Turfplex, and I also use the carbon kit with it. I, the carbon kit is not strictly necessary, but adding a little bit of nitrogen and iron uh, gets rid of or takes the edge off of the yellowing, the slight yellowing you get whenever you apply um, PGR. So it's not a, um, it's not something that you're going to, it's a permanent thing, but on Bermuda lawns anyway, and I imagine it's probably the same thing on Coolsies and Turf as well. The first time you apply PGR, it is especially worse I find the first time of the season, if you don't mix a little bit of iron or a little bit of or nitrogen in with it, you get like this, um, we call it bronzing, but it's like a, it's a, a slight yellowing of the, of the turf a couple of days after applying this. Once you mow the lawn, it's gonna be gone and it's just gonna be just, the green, the lawn's gonna to return to green. It's gonna look awesome as always. You're just gonna be mowing it a lot less frequently. That's the only, and I, I don't want to say it's a risk, but it's just it's something to that that you should be pre prepare prepare for um, as part of using plant growth regulator. It's not a negative. It doesn't doesn't look horrible. A lot of times when I do it on my lawn. You guys could not even tell when I, I sprayed PGR on it, but that is something that you you can have is a slight yellowing. It is temporary. Like the first time you mow after that that appears, which tends to happen two to three days after application, it's going to be gone. So what to, to kind of, so to, to summarize, I'm kind of going on and beating this point to death. But to summarize, let's say you applied PGR on a Monday. By Wednesday, Thursday, you're going to start. You'll likely see, or in my case, you see a slight yellowing of the turf. Um, the next time you mow, that's going to be gone, and then the grass is going to look great after that. And it's not. It's not going to return again. So, but the big thing is, the most important thing is read the label and apply it at the correct rates. PGR, like, you know, whereas with fertilizer, you can kind of jockey rates. You can, you can go a little heavier, go a little lighter or whatever. Um, with plant growth regulator, you really need to follow the rates. You can go lighter and not get as good a result, but, but you absolutely do not want to go heavy with PGR. More is not better. Uh, trust me when I say you do not need to go heavy um, with PGR to get a good result. And if you decide you want to get like the smaller container of it, of... Um, a Primo Max, Trinex Pack Ethyl. Uh, you can pick it up here. Yep, they got it back in stock. Do my own has it in stock. So I'll send you a link here to it. That way you can you can get it for a less for a smaller quantity. So you can try it out and that way you're not stuck with a gallon of the stuff if you decide you don't want to do it. So here you go. There is a link to plant growth regulator for you. Hopefully that helps. It's a good little chat, a little sidebar on uh on PGR. But it's awesome stuff, man. You won't regret it. Once you once you start. You're gonna you're gonna love it. I I could not imagine not using PGR on my lawn uh, these days. No way. Okay, so you guys are going back and forth about the tall fescue and the soap and water, and I'm looking for our next question. It looks like uh, Eric and Alex and Demir, that you guys are getting a question answered around your moss, which is good. Next up, we have Lois. She says, "I'm applying Dimension Granular this spring. Any tips you want to throw my way?" I use Prodiamine 007 in the fall. I decided on, on Triad for my clover, okay? Is there a difference between Triad and Triad QC? I don't know, I'm not familiar with that herbicide. Um, Lois to be able to tell you what the differences are between them, and I could look really quick, but I'm, I'm not, um, not familiar. As far as a tip, while well, I look it up here so I can, I can tell you really quick. Um, as, far as, um, as far as a tip for the granular dimension, uh, you are, I'm gonna give you a video to watch uh, as far as, as figuring out how much of the product you need to apply to your lawn. Because yes, granular pre-emergent is, is a lot less picky or a little less picky than, than using the, um, the, the water dispersible granule. Like with this, you really need to use an accurate scale. You need to weigh it out. You need to make sure you're applying it at the correct rates. With the granular, because the rates are a little bit lower, there's a bit more fudge factor, but I have a video on applying pre-emergent that you should watch that talks about how to determine application rates, even with granular, and how to weigh it out to make sure that you're putting down the right amount of product um, on the lawn. You're not, you're not over-applying it, but it sounds like you've already done it. You did, you did the 007 last fall. 
Um, just check the rate, you know, check the uh, the label and make sure you're accurately measuring out the amount of dimension granular that you need to uh, to achieve the correct the correct rate. And I'm looking for a video here that I'll send to you that shows you the process I'm talking about. But again, it's similar. It's going to be similar to what you did already with your uh, with the prodiamine over the fall. All right, so let me get this here for you, the link for you. So at Lois, let's see here, at uh, Lois H, and uh, pre, or I'd say measuring, um, measuring pre-emergent. Let me get, let me get this for you. It's, uh, it's the one, yeah, it's the one where I was at Real Rollers. So you don't need to watch the entire video, just watch the first part of it. Well, watch the entire things. I, I need, watch the entire things, I need the views, but uh, this, the first part of it is where I talk about um, accurately measuring uh, the weighing out how much you want to, how much of the product you're going to put down. All right, granular um, prodiamine uh, preamp measurement. There you go. Uh, met. Typing is hard. So hopefully that video should help you out, uh, Lois. Take a look at that. That will give you some some tips uh, as far as doing that. As far as triad and triad QC, I don't know off the top of my head. I'm just not familiar with that herbicide to be able to tell you. Um, I, I can do some more, tell you what, what I can do is I can do some digging and I believe I have your email address. I will email you after the show what my thoughts are on it. So I'll make a note to do that. I'll email you after the show uh, as far as, you know, which, what the, what the differences are once I have a chance to look, um, after the live stream is, is over. So hopefully that, that helps out. So, uh, email Lois, cause I, I do have your email address. Okay. Uh, next comment we have here. Oh, okay. oh, I, I'm getting in trouble here. Lance F says, you passed my comment earlier of Mo 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 every two days. It's true. Mo Mo Mo. I am so crazy. <laughs> I'm so crazy. I want to mow. I want to mow the snow. Did I miss your comment, Lance? Let me see if I can find it. Let me see. I, I mean, I, I can't be passing up comments on, on mowing. That would be a travesty. When did I pass it? When did I pass it? Let's see here. I, you're right. You're absolutely all right. He says, Mo, 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 every two days, let it rip. Yeah, buddy, you're absolutely right. You got it right. That is, uh, mowing is the thing that will set your lawn apart from your neighbors as, along with everything else. Like regular mowing is the foundation and then everything else I'm talking about, you know, the the carbon kit, the Humic Max, Essential G, like all those products, that's just, that just gives you that X factor, you know, to where they, they, they can't really catch you, but it's not gonna matter if you're not mowing your lawn. So there you go. I have uh, I have corrected my sins, uh, Lance F. I got your comment, so I apologize about that. I apologize about that. All right, uh, G Free says that's a good question. He says, have you ever had a rotary mower before? Yeah, when I was a, was a kid, when I was a um, when I used to mow when I was when I was made to mow lawns as part of servitude, as child servitude, child labor. When my dad made me uh, made me go out and mow, um, we have some properties on the island that I grew up on. So on the weekends. Not every weekend, but on certain weekends or certain weekends that were designated for, he called it, we're going to go cut bush. So, you know, lawn mowing. So that's, uh, yeah, so yeah, there was that. And then also when I um, wanted to make money, uh, I mowed lawns in the neighborhood. So, so that was what it was. Like my, like my parents bought my first Nintendo, the original Nintendo, the 8-bit, the NES, the original Nintendo. And then after that, they said, any games you want, you got to pay for it yourself. So mowing lawns was the way that I did it. Which is which is which is funny because at the time then I, I really hated mowing grass like I just just I detested it and then you get older and you turn into your parents so who would have thunk but yeah no in recent years I have not owned a rotary mower it, it's been you know since I was I don't know teenager since I've um, since I've I've had one so I've owned a rotary so there you go lawn whispers in the house what's going on sir hopefully all is going well with you thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream coming and say hi it's very nice and uh, appreciate that. And then uh, Alec, Eric has a question. He says, Alex B, do you, do you know the exact mix of soap and water? Uh, do you, I need Dawn soap or another type of soap and how much to use in the grass? Uh, I, I think it's just four ounces of soap, four ounces of, of Dawn, um, Eric B. I would stay, if you can avoid the, um, the antimicrobial uh, Dawn, that's the only, I'd say it's probably not gonna make a, a night and day difference because you're only gonna be spot spring a couple of areas, but if you can stay away from the, the, um, the antimicrobial, that's the only other thing I would say, but four, four ounces with one gallon is what Demir was, uh, was suggesting. As he answered right here, this is any type of dish soap, four ounces, one gallon of water, good to go. Okay, um, Scott Long and Lois H, he says, uh, at Lois H, I also recommend getting an impact drill 
it makes blade removal and uh, insulation so much easier. A hundred dollar uh, or less investment was one of the best additions to my kit. That's a good point because those those bolts can be um, they can be a bit tough to get off. So yeah, I mean having a little impact. Um, Something like, uh, I'm not gonna fish that out of there. Anyway, like uh, like a DeWalt or something, or a Black & Decker, like I have a DeWalt, but something like that, that you can use to um, to pop the bolt loose is a is a good idea. But again, even with doing that, make sure you disconnect the boot the boot off the spark plug before you get, you flip the mower over or you start messing with the, the blade, because that way you, you know, you, you take away chance of it starting up. So that's the only thing. What's a good idea? It's a good tip, Scott. Good tip. All right, uh, Jim Carson says, <laughs> Ron, so if we were to buy all of our fertilizer now, what should we buy? Uh, Humic Max. You, I mean, that's what I, that's what I'm going to use. If you're asking the question, that's what I would use. I, if you if you need something special, so let's say your soil is, let's say you give a scenario where you have like no phosphorus in your soil, right, and you've got to bring those levels up, then like the 182412 that I showed that was on the screen earlier, the one from Andersons, like that would be a good option. But as a general as a general, like excellent, excellent fertilizer that, like again, you're just gonna you're gonna get good results with. You just can't go wrong with Humic Max. Again, literally, I, there's sold um, quite a bit of this product, and I have yet to have anybody come back and be like, you know what, I got it, I got that fertilizer, I tried it out, and I didn't get good results with it. I didn't like it. You know, I didn't like it. So, it's a great product. I I um I'm a huge fan of it. A lot of uh, viewers have tried it and are really good fans of it. And the price right now is actually very, very good compared to what it was uh, over the summer of last year. Like it was, this was the price. It was, it was sixty nine ninety nine over the summer last year. Likely it will get. So I'm not sure it'll go up to that much, or it might be that. It might be that that price um, come March time frame. So we'll 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 see. So if you if you're looking for a great fertilizer, that this is the one that I would recommend. It's what I've used. I'm also working on some other options as well. But Humic Max is a great, is an excellent fertilizer. You're not going to go wrong with it. You're not going to go wrong with it. I haven't gotten any negative feedback on that fertilizer. And, and the fact is, it's not just a fertilizer. It's a fertilizer and it also helps improve the quality of your soil with that um, almost 9% uh, humic acid that's in it. So it's great stuff. And again, you know, for you, those of you guys that have really, really tight cut turf, you know, you got like a really tight canopy. Like this is what it looks like. This actually is Humic Max in this container. So if you look at like, I don't know, what's, what can I use as an example? Like this is the tip of a pen, American Marucci green pen. This is the tip of a pen and that's the prill size. So you see how small that is. It's smaller it's smaller than the tip of a pen. So as far as something that's going to get down in the canopy, like you're gonna apply it, it's gonna fall right through the canopy, get down in the soil and start working faster. Great product. So that is what I would go with unless you have some other vintage that you're a fan of. Uh, not gonna go wrong with Humic Max. Okay, what other questions do we have? What other questions do we have uh, as far as um, live stream? While I look for the other questions and I take a sip of my lemonade, let me put some uh, music on for you guys. All right, our next question is from Heart Fashion. It says, I did a soil test for my neighbor. He's low in all NPK, very low in all three. What FERT will quickly catch him up in all three? All right, well, quick, what do you mean by quickly? Like, quickly, like, I mean, I can give you the fertilizer that's gonna catch him up. Like, quickly is relative, right? Quickly is relative. Uh, quickly is relative to the soil that he has, his pH, like all those things as far as the stuff being available. But um, you can't go wrong with the triple 12. If you're saying that he's low in all three and you're looking for a generic balanced fertilizer that's got um, you know, good source of NPK and also will also improve micronutrient as well, you cannot go wrong. Again, go to the golf course lawn store and you can look here for the Yardmaster triple 12. I think I've got it on here somewhere. Yep, right here. Right here, this is a great option for him. So him or her, I'm assuming it's a guy. So. Oh yeah, it is a he as a guy. So yeah, so uh, this is what I would I would go with for some for a person that needs all three, uh, you would go with uh, with this as a as a starter for it. That's a, it's a great option. Reasonably priced, delivered to your door. It's got everything else in it. It's a good it's a good option. That is what I would uh, that is what I would use. And I've got and thanks to Jim, I've actually you know pinned <laughs> pinned the link to the Golf Wars Lawn Store at the top of the chat, so you don't have to actually type it in. Something I should probably should have done a long time ago, but hey. 
you think for a tech guy, it would be better. Th I'd be better than that, right? But uh, but yeah, get 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 a little bit better every day. That's the goal in life. That's always your goal in life, right? Improve in a small way every day. Okay, uh, Fairway Bermuda Lawn is saying, yeah, the Golfers Lawn Academy really helped me get started. I still go back for info. Yep, I appreciate that, uh, Daryl. Yep, so he Daryl was a student in the Golf Course Lawn Academy, or that was he is because that's one that's one another bonus of it, right? Once you sign up, you have access for life. It's not there's no reoccurring charges or anything like that. Once you're in, you're in. And I think I still have pictures of your lawn, Daryl. Let's see if I can simply find one here really quick. So, so using the process that's taught in the Golf Course Lawn Academy, coupled with lots of mowing you know, dedication, all that fun stuff. This was Daryl's lawn last year. That's a great picture. I, I, I got some better ones. Let me see if I got, um, see if I got any other good ones here, like a bigger one where we're not, so, we're up, up so close that you can actually see. Yeah, that, that's his lawn. I mean, that's like a, you know, I, I like to think that he didn't just put that leaf down on the lawn right there, you know, that for just for effect to show you how, how tight, how tightly cut it is. But, uh, that's that's clean. I mean, I don't care who you are. That's some good looking turf right there. So, he uh, he was he was one of the first members to join the Golf Course Line Academy. He did everything in that that I, I recommend in the course. You know, as far as regular mowing, soil testing, spoon feeding the lawn, and the results speak for themselves. So, great stuff. The course works. The, the material works if you if you do the work. If you do your part, it works. So. That's uh, that's all. That's all. That's all I'm gonna say about that. But I appreciate it, Daryl. I appreciate you chiming in, and, and congrats on starting the YouTube channel. Looking forward to the kind of content that you uh, that you put out. Should be should be great. Okay, Daniel's up. Says my lawn renovation is only 1,000 square feet. So does that change any way I approach killing off my old common Bermuda and planting new seed? No, not really. It just means you got a lot less work to do. So um, not really. I mean, a thousand square feet or 10,000 square feet. Uh, you know, get, you, your plan is to get rid of the existing grass. And then seed, um, you know, I guess get rid of these existing grass, put down your starter starter fertilizer of choice, and then put down seed. Then uh, yeah, it doesn't it like a one thousand square foot lawn to a five thousand square foot lawn, same process. It's just a little bit less work, which is cool. You know, a thousand square foot lawn, you may say, oh, it's only a thousand square feet, but here's the thing, Daniel. Here's the upside to that: you only have a small space to look really awesome. So you can really pamper it, baby it. Have it just, you know, you can make it, you can really make it look baller without like having to be out there hours and hours on. And like you can mow a thousand square feet in, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. If you're, if you're slow, you can, you can probably blow, you can probably mow, edge it and have it all done in 20 minutes. So that's, that's a bonus. Like, so you have no, no reason to not have a great looking lawn with a, with a thousand square feet to work with. So that's, that's a bonus to, uh, to that. That's a bonus to that. All right, and uh, you said that you're using, as far as killing it, uh, you said you're gonna be using glyphosate applications five to six over the next few months and then top dressing leveling around one inch of leveling mix with the last glyphosate application to the top dress uh, around three weeks before seeding. So it sounds like you got a process, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. The only thing I would tell you, Daniel, is take pictures. Take pictures, like, I mean, if you're already doing glyphosate now, like take pictures throughout the entire process. If you can, also take some video because it's always cool to be able to look back. You're not gonna be able, I, that's the only regret I really have is I don't have more pictures and video of my lawn when it was trashy. Like I've got some, like if you look in the, the video that's on the, um, if you go to golfcourselawn.com and look at the, the video that is there, uh, the first one you start that talks about the description of the course, there, you can see some screenshots of what my lawn used to look like. It was actually pretty crappy. So if you guys check that out, just watch the video. It's the first, in the first 20 seconds or so, I think. But I don't, I don't have enough of that of showing where it, where it was and what it turned into, and so that's the only regret I have. So with this big project you're taking on, definitely make sure you take lots of pictures, lots of video, so you have a uh, a good reference, a good reference. And then you can, if you want, send them my way, and I'll share, I'll share them on the live stream. Everyone can see, hey, this is a Daniel's huge project and how it turned out. We can all like you know bow down to you and and bask in all your all the glory of all your hard work, right? So there's that too. There's that too. All right, uh, we have a, a, a question here. Eric B says, uh, Alex B, so use like uh, what I have, the two gallon sprayer. I think you're still talking about moss. And yeah, if you have moss, so in that case with a two gallon sprayer, again, if you have enough air that you require that much of it, um, it would be um, two gallons of water with eight ounces of dish soap. So that's what you would use. Eric for moss treatment in your two gallon in your two gallon sprayer. So not bad at all. Not 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 too tough. But again, I it sounds like a lot of moss. If you need if you need two gallons worth of it, you probably have a lot of moss. I wouldn't think it would be that that much of it. 
Okay, let's see what other questions and, or comments we have here. We got Thin Cut. We are winding down, guys. I'm talking to you guys out. Thin Cut is here. Says, Evening, everyone. Don't forget to hit the like button. Well said, sir. You know, you just you just came in and you're making sure the business is taken care of. I appreciate that. I really appreciate that. You know, you need to come in and say, hey, Ron, I got a problem. You know, I got this weed in my lawn. I got, you know, how do I top dress? My mower won't start. The first thing you came in and says, hey, guys, hit the like button ever so gently. Ron would appreciate it. And you're absolutely right. I would appreciate it. Thanks, sir. Hope you, hopefully you're doing well. Hopefully you're staying warmer than we are. Um, I think you're in Tennessee, so you're actually probably colder than, than, than we are here in Georgia. But hopefully you're staying bundled up, staying out of this cold weather. You're very, very welcome, uh, Eric B. You are very, very welcome. And then Alex B. is chiming about Hugh McMax saying, yeah, even at $69, Hugh McMax is a really good value with the square foot coverage. The holiday deal with the current price is an absolute steal. He's, he's right about that because you figure one bag of Humic Max covers 15,000 square feet. And here's the thing, guys. It's not like how some how some products that say, you know, one bag covers 15,000 square feet and it doesn't really cover 15,000 square feet. Like it's like a lot of the Yard Mastery products, right? Like if you get like uh, Flagship or the Triple 12 or any of their products that are designed to be put down in that three pounds per thousand rate, like you really do get that much coverage. Like three, literally, the three pounds per thousand square foot rate on Humic Max that gets you the about the around the half a pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet that I use in my spoon feeding program, right? So it's literally you can get, um, you know, three pound if you apply it the way that I use it in the golf course lawn um, academy, one bag will cover fifteen thousand square feet. So compare that to the price of like say malorganite, which is at I mean I have no idea what it costs now. Last year when I looked it was like seventeen eighteen dollars a bag. So which covers 2,500 square feet. So if you do the math on that, it's like way cheaper than Milo. And it also has humic um, uh, acid in it. And it also is got the, you know, the, the smaller pearl size. So for shortcut turf, tight cut turf, it's a better, it's a better product than the same Milo. So it's just a, a lot of benefits to it. And you're right, $69, it's a good deal. At $47.99 or whatever it is right now, it's like an absolute steal. You guys should be like loading up on it. Absolutely should be loading up on it. All right. Um, Jim Carson said, thanks. I just purchased the 1608 Humic Max. Awesome. Good job, man. Good job. Get it while it's there because when I have to reload, we have to restock it. It's. Uh, I don't know that it's going to be the same price. It's definitely not going to be 40 the price that it is now. It's, it's, it's likely going to cost more. All right. And the next one we have CE user. It's a good question about army worms. Is army worms, can they be prevented or just treated when they arrive? They can be prevented, um, CE user. So uh, what I would recommend for, for keeping army worms out of your lawn is an insecticide called a celeprin. So do you remember last year when it was like army worm again, when everyone's lawns all around, like across the, the entire country getting eat, eaten up with army worms? You know whose lawn wasn't getting eaten up with army worms? This guy's. You know who's also wasn't getting eaten up with army worms? Alex's, my neighbors. So the what I would recommend is um, an insecticide called a celeprin. There are again, yes, yes, you can go out, go to Home Depot and get like some of the some of the uh, less expensive um, options as far as as far as insecticides. But a celeprin, literally, I applied this stuff one time in March. I didn't have any issues with armyworms in my lawn all year. And I'm trying to find the video here for you now so you can. Uh, you guys can see what I am, um, what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, keep your lawns. I, I, the, the title of the video is "Keep Your Lawns Grub Free." I'm, I'm talking about keeping grubs out of your lawn. But the act, the thing is, the active ingredient in a celeprin is uh, chlorantranilopril. It's a mouthful. It's, chlor it's chlorantranilopril, and it's very good because it's it's very good at killing uh, army worms, uh, bill bugs, uh, bluegrass weevils. Uh, but it doesn't kill earthworms. It doesn't doesn't harm pollinators. So it's, it so it kills the stuff we want dead, and it's very good against armyworms too. Um, it keeps the stuff that we don't want in our lawn out of our lawn, but doesn't kill the stuff that we want to keep in our lawn. So it's an excellent product. Uh, highly, highly recommend it. Like literally, I used um, a celeprin one time last year in March, and I had no issues with armyworms in my lawn. Alex was the same thing. No issues with any armyworms at all. When other lawns, literally in, the, in our neighborhood, was getting eaten up with them. So. Uh, and I've got, so I've got a video here. I'll send you a link, a uh, CE user to it. And also a link to the product and also a link to the videos that's for you to watch. The, the time to apply it is really March timeframe. March, March, uh, early April is a good time to get it down. That's when I did it and got great, great results. 
Uh, again, one bag for an entire season is really is really all you really should need. Depending, um, it was enough for my lawn, which is at the time was twelve thousand square feet. Before like fences and stuff went in, and it got a little bit smaller. And as far as the video that talks all about it and explains how to apply it and all the fun jazz, why it's so awesome, uh, the video I uh, see a uh, 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 product video is there. So there you go. There's a product video that talks all about it. Um, so great product. That is what I would use. I would, do not wait till they arrive because by the time they arrive, it's too late. <laughs> Army worms destroy lawns very, very quickly. You, by the time you see them, like it's you're you're in for you're in for some pain. So get get a, a preventative insecticide down prior. I like to use a celeprin earlier in the season, and it's uh, it, it's worked really good well for me. Worked very very well for me. All right, uh, Thin Cut says, you, he, you are in Kannapolis. So I guess they were trying to name it after Annapolis. Kannapolis, uh, NC, I, I get to enjoy snowy birthday tomorrow. I'll be 54. Happy birthday, man. Happy happy early birthday. That's that's awesome. That's awesome. I don't know where Kannapolis is, but uh, uh, again, I, I guess you get to go play in the snow if that's your thing, right? So cool stuff. Vance Woods is in the house of the question. He says, hey, Mr. Stripe Action, never been called that, but I guess it's worse or better than a lot of things I have been called. He says, uh, I hope all continues to go well with you. I appreciate that. He says, thanks for all the advice last week on what to do to get rid of the POA and you are trying to take over my, for, my, uh, my Bermuda. You're very, very welcome. Hopefully, if you've already started doing it, you're gonna see results. Uh, just realize that any herbicide that you, that you apply this time of year they're gonna take a little bit, they're gonna work a little bit slower, especially if you used, um, I'm not sure if we talked about image or if we spoke about certainty, but in both cases, just know it's gonna be a little bit slower for you to get the result, but they will work just given given time. So very, very cool. <laughs> Rich Harriet is like, when the price of Humic Max uh, dropped, I bought enough to last three seasons. I went after it like like COVID toilet paper. Although you know, so so what is a new thing? What's a new toilet paper now? So we we have toilet paper now. You can find that. But is uh cream cheese seems like it's the thing now, right? Like you can't find cream cheese in any of the stores, or at least not around here. Uh, it's like for some reason people are buying up all the cream cheese, or it's a supply chain thing where you can't get it. So always something, always something. And then Daniel, I think this will be our last comment of the night, looks like. He says, I got three pounds of hydrotain for seeding. Will I need any more if I ordered your full list of first micronutrients and or PGR? Or will that be overkill and do more damage than benefit? Okay, so let's, okay, we don't need to go overkill. The process you outlined sounds good. I think you said you're going to aerate, you're going, you're going to kill off the existing lawn. You're going to aerate, you're going to top dress. Uh, you're going to put down your, um, your starter furt. And then you're going to be seeding, and you can do so. That that's good. That was just, let's, gonna, as far as seeding goes, let's stop there. Well, you don't no PGR until the grass is actively growing because, like PGR on seed, is not going to do anything. So, you, you it, it's a foliar absorbed um, product. You need to have the grass needs to be actively growing before you put PGR on it. So, in your case, um, here is how I would do it: sequence. I would aerate your lawn, assuming you're going to do that as part of top dressing. But if you are, aerate your lawn, and then I would apply your um, carbon soil amendments, so your essential G. I would do your FERT, your starter fertilizer. So if you're doing with the triple 12, that's fine, or whatever you happen to be using, I would do that. I would then do the hydrotain, if you have the hydrotain. Then I would top dress. So I would do those things and then top dress. Reason being is that everything that we I've talked spoken about up to now needs to get down in the soil anyway to work. So if you're aerating, I'm just assuming you are, but if you're aerating, um, why not take advantage of the fact that the soil is already opened up and you've got some voids where you can fast track some of this stuff. Not all of it's going to get down to it, but you can fast track some of it into the soil. Then you top dress, then do your seed, rake the seed. Like after you top dress and put your seed down, like rake and rake the seed in um, so you get some good uh, soil to seed contact and then just water and wait. Uh, for Bermuda grass seed, I would not bury it. Uh, you know, you don't, it, it, if you look at the label for Arden 15, the instructions, it calls for like an eighth to a quarter inch of, um, of soil. So not much. So literally you could top dress, put the seed down and then take your leveling rake and just literally drag over the entire lawn. And that's good. You're, you're going to get enough seed, seed to soil contact uh, with that to get uh, a good result. And then it's just watering. It's keeping the soil moist. Uh, and to get good germination. So one thing I would say, Dan, and I know you're all gung-ho and ready to go, but the fact that you're doing this from seed, 
means that you really need to wait until soil temperatures are 65 degrees or higher. Like that, that's really going to, if you do that within 11 days or so, you know, nine to 11 days, R15, you're gonna start seeing some germination. If you do it when it's cooler, it's gonna be, you know, it's gonna take a little bit longer. So I would, you know, make sure you're, you're going through your process, um, make sure the conditions are also ideal to get a good result. That's the only rec other recommendation I would give to you. Sounds like you got it all figured out, man. I'm looking forward to hearing uh, how, it, how it comes out. How it comes out. Jim says, I my, my 600 square foot front yard, I guess humic max will last a long time. Yeah, it will. It depends on how you're using it. I mean, if you're using it only as the, if you're not doing it like how I use it in the spoon feeding program where you are putting it down at um, like five pounds per thousand, uh, where you get, you know, six weeks or so of, of coverage out of it, that, that then you do it every six weeks or so. Uh, it'll last a little, it won't last quite as long, but I mean, on 600 square feet, man, you're not going to be using very much of it at all. So, which is again, I always say smaller lawns are cool because you it's you have a small space that you can make it look really, really, really awesome. You know what I mean? So that's that's always a, that's always a benefit a benefit to it. All right, guys. Well, I think that is it. I think it's everything that I have for you guys tonight. Answered all the questions. Lots of great comments. The likes are looking good. If you guys have not given any likes on your way out. I would appreciate that. So again, just to recap some of the benefits, the Golf Course Lawn Academy is live. If you want to save money on it and be able to take advantage of the discount of both getting the course and the getting the the, uh, the the discount coupon that only members get, saves you 10% on all Miramichi Green products. And I'm gonna hopefully expand that to other things in the in the store here soon. Um, that you know that's that's a no-brainer. So absolutely take advantage of that. You get access to the private Facebook group. Um, you get priority email responses. If you email me, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna respond you know faster to people that are are, are academy members than um, than other email that I get. And it's a great way to support the channel and a way for you to save save some coin. You can literally recover the cost of the course over time based on how much stuff you order. So, well, guys, I really really do appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for coming to hang out. Uh, in the live stream. Hope it was fun for you guys. I had a great time. I'm going to work on getting Demir on to where we can have a guest, you know, guest visitor. You guys seem to really enjoy that. Everyone stay warm. Have a safe and uh, fun weekend. Take care.